Welcome to Backpacker Radio presented by The Trek. Today is January 15th. Oh, sorry. I looked up December 8th. I can't do anything <laughs> right. Fuck me. Okay, let me quickly Google oh, the holiday. I got it. I got it. I got January it. January 15th. That answers my question about when this was going to come Today out. Today was <coughs> National Salesperson Day. I got so excited. I got cock black by chance. She left a note in her show notes saying, don't worry, I got the holiday one well, covered. got it. Okay, I got it. Um, today is Martin Luther King Day. Oh, you're always supposed to choose like a frivolous, oh. stupid holiday. That's a real holiday. We National want... Bagel Day. There you go. <laughs> I am your co-host, Zach Badger Davis. Sitting to my right is... Hi, I'm Juliana Chauncey, a.k.a. Chauncey. Uh, before we get to today's highly anticipated interview, got a couple of reminders for you. First is I've been meaning to give a shout out for a couple of episodes now. I'm glad I'm remembering finally. Uh, our guy, our editor... Pauly Shawcross, he is roasting beans. He's got an awesome coffee roastery up there in the Northwoods. I got my beans three weeks ago and we sucked them down very quickly. Very good stuff. I know we did an episode saying that we don't like black coffee, but uh, I drink so much coffee. And it's just, since having kids, I became dependent on it. And now that I'm getting sleep again, I'm already addicted to it. So I'm like a half a pot minimum per day. And this stuff is very good. Um, it's Old Man Murphs is the name of the roastery, and that's O-M-M-C-R dot com. If you want to support our guy, please do so at that website, and it'll be in the show notes. Uh, another exciting development is now that the studio looks remotely nice, I think we've upgraded a bit, we're going to fix that wall. And you guys can't see what that wall is, but it's an, it's an awesome Tyvek sheet that we've hanged, hung and every guest that's been in studio has signed this. Some people have left little notes. A lot of people have left hair, Johns. Do you want me to explain it? Sure. Okay. When we had Man Made on and he was telling us about like sending postcards to random strangers and visiting them and all the like fun art projects he does, um, one of them was that he has a hair suitcase. I think he talked about it in the episode. Yeah. But he has a suitcase full of other people's hair. And so when the episode was done, I bartered a trade with him where I traded him a lock of my hair for his hair suitcase in exchange for a lock of his hair for our wall. Um, and since then, other people have been very excited about this hair wall and wanted to contribute. And yeah. typically on the episodes where we've drank more, we have let them. Yes. Uh, so I'm seeing loosely eight lockets of hair. Um, Sugar left some. We got Patricia Cameron from Black Packers. We got Wheels. We've got Frisky. Frisky. Um, what's the one in the top right corner? Um, we've got My eyes are Rocky good Mountain High, aka Butt Drugs. Yeah. It specifically says Rocky Mountain High to Mars with Butt Drugs. Yeah. And she drew um, a butt with the hair coming out of the butt. So that tells you everything you need to know about that. But this Tyvek Sheets has been signed by some of the biggest names in long distance backpacking. Skirka's got his signature in here a couple times. Pony, the real hiking biking. Courtney Dahl Walter. Yeah, basically you name it. Uh, this is history to Backpacker Radio. And we will be auctioning this off and donating the proceeds to some nonprofit. I have a couple of ideas for what we can do there. Yeah, money's not going to us is the main takeaway. Yeah, it is going to a good cause. Um and hopefully someone can have this piece of BPR history that has hung on our wall for years and give it a good home or, you know, put it under your tent when you go do a hike. So it's my goal that we start this auction within a month of this podcast. So if you're listening to this and you want to make sure that you get the notification of when that happens, please subscribe to the Trex newsletter. Uh, the link for that will be included in the show notes. I'd give you the URL, but it is sheer chaos and uh, it won't do you any good. Last note is if you're through hiking in 2024 and want to share your journey with a large platform, consider blogging for the trek. You've heard me say that a thousand times, so I won't go any further than that. Okay, let's get to today's interview. This was a highly requested guest. He's fresh off the boat from Hawaii. <laughs> uh, very excited to talk with Kyle O'Grady. You may re already know him from Kyle Hates Hiking, his popular YouTube channel with 280,000 subscribers. Damn. Kyle has extensive backpacking experience having completed the Long Trail, AT, Northville Placid Trail, PCT, and Wachita Trail, in addition to many other peak bagging and backpacking feats. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us here on Backpacker Radio. I'm super grateful, and I have to give a caveat just because the commenters will rip me up. I yeah. did not finish the PCT. I did most okay. of it, okay. <laughs> but I got burnt out from fires and stuff. Uh -huh. I, I did heard, most of it. I know though. that you're a purist. I, yeah, yeah. I don't like to call myself that because I feel like people are like, oh, fucking purist, dude, like bad connotation. But I mean, for the most part, like, yeah, 
basically. Yeah. So if somebody hikes, I don't know the particulars of your PCT hike, but if somebody hikes uh, 250, 2,500, 50 miles of the PCT and the miles they missed were because of fires, are they a through hiker or not? I don't know, dude. That's the thing. Like <laughs> before my PCT, ah, I don't know. I think it depends on the trail too. Well, I mean, let's be honest. At the end of the day, it just depends on whatever you, you know, you want it to be for yourself. But sure. I don't know. I do made you a, judge others or are you just judging your own hike? <laughs> no, dude, no. Uh, it's weird because, like, for me, I guess I don't really consider it my PCT hike like a proper through hike. But when I was on the trail, like, you call yourself a through hiker, but sure. you haven't finished it yet. So, yeah. like, are you a through hiker? Are you not? Like, also, what about shorter trails, like trails that are 100 miles long or 200 or even less? Like, is a 50-mile trail a through hike? Yeah. Like, what's the cutoff there? Nobody knows what the hell a through hike really is. Let's it's be the honest. great debate. I think we've talked about that very question on this podcast. Before. Yes, because when we were on the Trans Catalina Trail, which was a whopping thirty-eight miles, yeah. we were asking ourselves: Are we through hiking it, or are we just fucking off for a weekend? Yeah, I think we made the definition of whatever the shortest hike we've done is the definition of. Yeah, a that is <laughs> it. Um, Basically, any trail that I've done or almost done is a through hike. If yeah, you exactly. Ask me, but no. I just through hiked to Fat Sully's to get that pizza. So nice. Yeah, that's a very good through, a through hike you did. Yeah, thank you. That's good. It's always good when you can gain weight on a through hike. Self-supported. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful that you guys are having me on. Um, we can get into it if you want, but like, I don't know if a lot of people that follow me know this, but like my first ever like dip into content was writing for not even the Trek at the time. It was Appalachian Trials yeah. still. Mm. Old school. And like, that was literally the first hiking content or content at all that I ever made. And it was like pretty well received. And like, I got great feedback from you and from Maggie and from everybody else there at the time. And it really just like gave me a lot of confidence in myself and like really made me think that like maybe I have a voice like in this space. And so I really appreciate it. And I wanted to make sure you heard that, Zach, because like it really did have a huge impact um, all the way to where I am now doing this full time. So like it's that's what that's I'm like so grateful to be here and I'm so excited. So honestly, incredibly flattering. Thank you very much. Uh, and I remember you'd mentioned before we hit the button, they're like, I wasn't sure if you'd remember me. And <laughs> Appalachian Trials was such a small thing at that point that yeah. yeah of course i remember you and yeah uh so thank you to you for being a part of those early days because you guys were literally the foundation to getting the trek to where it is today yeah so, so the, definitely reciprocated there it's, it's kind of funny i was so i remember i was writing for you around the time when it became the trek it's it was appalachian trials and it switched to the trek and i remember at one point before the switch you had sent out a survey to all the writers huh. asking uh, for, you know, voting on name ideas for the new website. What were the, the other names? names? I don't remember the other names, Come but on. I do remember that I did not vote for the trick. That's that's all <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I can remember the, so there's one other one that was very close. And I think the trek was actually the second most popular according to that survey I put out, but it was close enough that it was like, I'm going to make the final decision. I remember what the other one was. What, what it? was it? Hiker Buffet. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Like, I think it wasn't you made a good choice. It wasn't so much that I didn't like the name the trek. Uh, it was more so that I didn't want you to change it from Appalachian Trials, which now, <clears throat> you know, however many years later, I obviously understand why you changed it, and yeah. it's obviously a great move. But at the time, I think I was just like kind of stuck in my ways or whatever. I was like, oh, like Appalachian Trials, like so sick. But obviously, it makes sense, and the trek is a, a sick name. Imagine, Thank you, imagine we started these episodes with you're listening to Backpacker Radio presented by Hiker Buffet. Yeah. <laughs> so my thinking at the time was the trek sounded like so professional and polished and basically <laughs> I mean, I mean is it not? If we say that, uh it no definitely not polished <laughs> we've got a unicorn with wearing trek oh, shorts yeah. I no that's a horse that. dressed up like a unicorn yeah, from letter that's Kelly. right of course um my concern was coming off as something that we weren't and uh I think we've done a good job of maintaining that hiker trash element with it. Yeah. I thought that hiker buffet would have been more, a little bit tongue in cheek and more fun for people. But yeah, no, I definitely feel like we made the right decision on that. One. I think the results speak for themselves at this point. Well, who knows? Maybe it would be uh, CNN at this point if it was hiker buffet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never know. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to flip this back on you because, you know, <clears throat> you were one of many contributors, definitely a, a very solid contributor. I remember, a lot of your stuff, but to fast forward to today, you're now one of the biggest personalities on YouTube. I know you've got a successful podcast as well. Um, I guess in your, from your perspective, do people know you more as the podcasting guy or the YouTube guy? No, the YouTube guy okay. for sure. Okay. It's, it's funny because the podcast um, Trail Tales actually started uh, before my YouTube and I did that podcast for about a year. 
And I always knew that I wanted to do YouTube too, but I just like didn't quite have the balls to like start it. And you know, I already had a microphone and I didn't have a camera yet. So like some financial stuff too, but like deep down, like I always wanted to do YouTube. And um, I did the podcast for a little over a year actually. And then I started YouTube and then they've kind of grown together, but now the, the YouTube channel is much bigger than the, uh, than the podcast, but I'm still grinding away, dude. I actually just bought myself one of these, oh, nice. these shirts. <clears throat> actually, I bought a fake one first unknowingly. Uh, <laughs> turns out when you buy it from China or something. Yeah. It was about half price. So I probably should have seen uh, that coming, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying, but most people definitely know me from YouTube. Okay. So <clears throat> for the few people listening to this who aren't familiar with your YouTube channel, give us a rundown on what it is. Yeah. It's actually changed quite a bit over the past year. Um, at first I started it in late 2019 and, you know, it was just like hiking stuff. Like I would do like trip vlogs and, you know, top 10 backpacks, you know, b- you know, bullshit like that. And, um, I did that for a while and I found some good success. I went and hiked the PCT or <laughs> most of the PCT in 2022. I heard you through hiked it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> nah. According to my commenters, I didn't, but hey, no. Same. <laughs> yeah. oh, really? I'm really yeah. soft. It yeah. gets to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, and so it was all, you know, your typical like through hiking kind of stuff, backpacking stuff, gear stuff. And then around this time last year, actually, almost to the day, I, uh, I started uploading videos about like they're kind of hard to describe they're like i call them mystery videos okay where i'm like storytelling i was gonna say true crime it, see it's like i think that like i think most people will kind of understand what you mean by that but a lot of the stories i cover aren't crime they're like people that got lost in the wilderness Fair. or um okay. accidents you know things like that's that good clarification. um so that's why i like to call mystery some some are crimes though for sure like i've covered a number of the more infamous murders and some ones that are less known like on the at and things like that And, um, and so that's kind of the direction of my channel. I slowly kind of transitioned into doing just that kind of stuff, which is kind of where I'm at now, but I still have the, the podcast to kind of have be my, my more, uh, less serious and, uh, more through hiking, hiking nerdy outlet while the, um, the mystery videos at this point have really taken on an audience much broader than just like the, the through hikers, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. And it's allowed me to, you know, do this full time and everything, um, and so it's a weird transition because my, the first number of years on my YouTube channel, I think what brought me the success that I did find was the fact that I was very goofy and I didn't take things very seriously. There's a lot of your mom jokes, a lot of like dick jokes and stuff like that in my videos. Um, and then it was the really serious, like telling the story of a murder on the AT kind of stuff that actually like blew up my channel to the point where I was able to support myself from it. So it kind of ironic, but I'm also like, I mean, I'm super grateful and I try my absolute best to like, I don't know, do those stories justice and not mess them up and and be respectful to like the victims and their families and everything. And so far I haven't gotten any complaints, but I'm sure I'll mess something up at some point. What is trying not to so hard. It's like my biggest fear. (laughs) What is the process? Cause I mean, yeah, the, the ones that you have that are on, um, hiking mysteries and stories is the playlist. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that like, by far and away have the most yep. views, right? Yep. What goes into creating one of these videos? Cause they're anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. It seems. Yeah. What is the process of researching, creating the story, scripting out the video? Like what are you doing to make it go from this would be a cool story to tell to now I'm pushing publish. Yeah. The first thing I'll do is just like, you know, just read about the stories obviously and try to, you know, find something that I think, will, I don't know, be something that people want to hear and something that I think people can like learn from too. Um, you know, in the past I didn't do a great job at it. I I think I'm getting better with, with each one of these stories. I do, even though at this point, honestly, a lot of the people watching those videos aren't really even hikers. Mm -hmm. I still try to like extract lessons from them or takeaways, you know, because a lot of these are, they're all like very sad stories for the most part. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll try to find like a compelling story something that I think people want to hear something that people can learn from. And then I'll just like read, I'll just read about it, whether it's from like books or articles or whatever. Um, I try to read a lot of different sources because I've discovered that there's a lot of like very, there's a lot of inconsistencies, even just in like regular, like news reporting, like what you think would be a legit, I mean, legitimate source, but you'll, you'll read an article from one 
news outlet and it'll have like different details than other outlets quite often. And it's usually not like super important details, but it's just little things. Sure. And so I'll just read a bunch and try to make sure that I have everything um, correct. Sometimes I'll even reach out to either the person that was in the story or someone, if it was someone that either disappeared or passed away, like someone who knows them. Mm-hmm. I try to do that when I can. I don't always get through to them, but I always try to. And every time I have gotten through them, they've been super like grateful and thankful. Only one time I think I've ever had someone who respectfully declined to have me cover their story. Um, and then I'll write, I'll write like a five, six page essay basically, <laughs> which is probably another place where my, my Appalachian trial skills came in. I was gonna say it makes perfect sense that you yeah. did this because like it's uh, definitely very linear from like a journalist yep. background. Yep. And I'll just write a script and then I'll finally sit down to film it. And at first I would like, have my laptop here with the script and I'd like quickly memorize a sentence or two, say it, fuck it up, have to do it again. And it took forever. <laughs> I have a teleprompter now. Okay. I'm that guy. So that helps. About that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, so, cause for like, I'm doing this research podcast that I've been researching mm-hmm. for five years. So Is it mile by mile? Mile by yeah. mile. So that kind of sound, everything you're saying sounds familiar in the, like part of what's taking so long is, there will be slight differences in things and my brain is like I need the exact answer yeah oh yeah and then I've tried like when I finished scripting for parts of it just recording it to see how that goes and that's the part that I have issue with is I want it on video too and when you're looking that way like that's not a compelling video so what kind of teleprompter do you use that makes it just some Amazon bullshit honestly just like a cheapo one yeah yeah I mean it was probably like a hundred bucks or something And, and I take my phone and I like prop it up and I have like an app on my phone it's it's a little janky but it's like small and compact like i'm i've been moving around a lot the past year so like i want it you know pretty movable and so it's definitely helped it was a little weird to get used to the first couple videos because it's like kind of distracting but after a while i got used to it it bugs me a little bit though i don't think i've never gotten a comment about this so i don't know if anyone else has ever noticed it but i can kind of notice my eyes moving just a little bit we used to i worked in broadcasting um for my degree and we used to have to do the teleprompters in the news station, and that used to always freak me out. Mm-hmm. No one notices. Okay, that's good. It still bugs me out sometimes. I'll still find myself like memorizing like a part of a sentence from the teleprompter just so I can try to look where I think the center of the lens is, even though I can't really see it with the tele. So it's, I don't know. I've, yeah. It's it's kind of like muscle memory at this point. I think I've gotten okay at it, but <clears throat> if you were to see some of the outtakes, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I'd say that you're pretty good at it. So your top video here has almost 4 million views. You got another one with over a million, a million, like these things are resonating, obviously. Dude. Yeah. I'm super grateful, man. Super lucky. Like I've been doing YouTube since, you know, late 2019. And it was really just the past year that it like really started to, to blow up. So yeah. grateful. Did this come from like you experimented with different content types and like you notice that there's a lot of interest in this and you're chasing that or is the mystery genre something that you've always felt passionate about and you're starting to steer in that direction because of that yeah i've I've definitely like consumed like the true crime kind of stuff but i i'm i would never call myself like a huge like true crime mystery nerd but um i i definitely consumed it and the way that i stumbled into this whole new style i guess is like you just said there, I was always looking for new ideas, all always under the umbrella of like hiking and backpacking. Mm-hmm. And one day I was just, you know, brainstorming and there's this gentleman named Scott Lilly who was murdered on the Appalachian Trail in 2011. And, you know, I was aware of most of the AT murders and a lot of them have received, you know, quite a bit of media attention and, and rightfully so. But for some reason, Scott Lilly's story hadn't and i just felt like it was a story that not that many people knew and that was the year that i hiked and i've never even heard of this yeah so this is what i'm saying like um he was in uh he was in virginia very close to the priest shelter and um i don't know why for and it's you know 2011 it's not even that long ago like there's you know cases that are much older than that that have received a lot more attention mm-hmm. and again you know there's nothing wrong with that of course like these cases should be should be talked right. about and these stories should be told but for some reason, I just felt like his story didn't receive much attention. And so I was like, well, I'm sure a lot of people that follow me have never heard this story. And maybe that's something they'll be interested in. And so I told the story. I put it on my channel. I literally even said in the video, I was like, don't worry. This isn't going to turn into a true crime channel. This is just a one-off thing, which people have st- still remind me of sometimes in my comments <laughs> nowadays. But um, 
the response was just like super crazy for my audience. Like people loved it. I've never gotten so many comments being like, you got to do more videos like this. Mm. You got to do more. And these are, you know, at this point it was still like my core audience, right? It hadn't exploded yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, about a week after I posted that video, it was literally right around this time last year. I was thinking about it earlier today. Um, it, the algorithm took over that video ended up blowing up more than any video I'd ever had. And so that combined with the fact that I was getting all these comments from my, you know, the people that would comment on every single one of my videos and you, you start to recognize people's usernames and stuff. Mm. And they were all telling me like, you got to do more like this. I was like, okay, well maybe I have something here. And so I just kept doing them and they kept blowing up and eventually it got to the point where honestly I was a little bit sick of doing like top five, you know, backpacks, like those kinds of videos too. Um, not sick of like talking about hiking obviously, but just, I don't know. I just felt like that was these mystery videos were really what I wanted to do. And mm. the audience, seem to agree and, and I've reached a lot more people now too. So yeah, that's kind of the, that's, that's kind of the story. It was never some master plan where I was like, Oh, I'm going to switch mm -hmm. to this and it's going to blow. No, I just kind of stumbled into it by accident and I'm mm -hmm. very grateful for all the, all the new subscribers and everyone who's, who's watching. Mm -hmm. We're going to go down the like gear video rabbit hole as well. Um, but I'm a big story person. I love hearing a story, especially when someone's sitting in front of me and telling me it like mm -hmm. lucky me. Um, and I kind of want to get some of these stories from you as we move our way through the interview. And you mentioned this one from 2011, which yep. is when Zach hiked and he doesn't know about it. Yeah, no but I think this. that could be a cool one for you to kind of just like tell us a bit about. Yeah, I, I've i done a lot of these videos at, at this point, so I might not be able to remember like all the, the details. Cliff notes. Um, but yeah, I mean, Scott, honestly, there's not much information on Scott Lilly's story out there. I, I don't know why, like his, I don't know. I couldn't find much. Um, you know, most of my videos like that are around like 15 to 20 minutes long, but I think that one was only 10 minutes, but, um, yeah, he, I think he was a Southbound hiker and I think definitely take some of the stuff with a grain of salt. Cause like I said, this was about a year ago that I made this one, sure. but, um, I think he was, this is, I don't like giving like the gory details sometimes, but like he was stabbed to death mm -hmm. and found just like a little bit off the trail and they don't, they don't know who did it. They don't have any leads. They haven't, or at least public leads. They haven't released any information. There's really nobody knows. It's, it, it really is a mystery and it's, and it's super sad. Cause like, I don't know. He, he was from Indiana. I know. Um, it, there's really not much else. Like it's a, it's a super That's crazy that this isn't more known. Cause... So you had never heard of this one too. No. This is like when I first posted that video, I had, yeah, like people that are like pretty well known, like other YouTubers, in this community, like reaching out to me and being like, yeah, I'd never heard this either. Like people that have hiked, like tons of people that have hiked the AT right. that had never heard about his story. It's definitely worth um, looking into. I'll watch the video. Yeah, after but this like video. I said, there's there's not that much yeah. info on it, unfortunately. <clears throat> um, one story on your channel that I did recognize, and I don't want to say it's fun because it's not fun, but it's insane. Is Bismarck? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Dude, I'm afraid that guy's gonna fucking find me someday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he's been written about by a lot of publications, so I don't think you're in good company. Is the moral of the story? Yeah. Wait, but who's Bismarck? I'll let you tell the story. All, all I'll give from my perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. is I was at Trail Days when he was arrested. Oh, you were? Yeah. Oh no way. Yeah, I remember that being. Was a big I spectacle. at Trail Days? This was before you. BC? This had to have been like. 16 oh yeah that's BC. maybe i don't remember the exact year that he's arrested maybe 18 yeah i don't remember either to be honest yeah okay, um, so what happened so basically this dude from what i remember and if you remember anything too like feel free to interject or, or correct I'll me to dig up the trek article to get my yeah yeah there you ready. go yeah and definitely just for everyone listening like definitely take like i said a second ago like take some of this with a grain of salt because some of the exact details are a little fuzzy but this dude basically um he's embezzled like eight million dollars yeah, okay yeah 2015 yeah, yeah. He, he embezzled like eight million dollars from his company and he was wanted and he by the fbi i believe mm -hmm. and um he went into hiding by just like kind of you know hiking the at and year like, after year and like i don't know if he was like <laughs> speaking of what is it through i don't know if he was like literally every single year like purist like hiking the trail i think he was kind of just like hopping around like trail towns and, and various spots on the trail and stuff and and um I mean, yeah, he hid. When, when, when did he like uh, run away? That's I can't remember the year. <clears throat> it was it was a decent decent amount of time. Yes. Like, it was a couple of years so, at least. So uh, he was accused of stealing almost nine million dollars between ninety eight and two thousand nine. Uh, been on the run 
since 2009 it looks so like yeah from 2009 to 2015 basically he was hiding out on the AT and I if I recall the way he got caught is someone that he had hiked with a little bit saw him on ah uh, what was the name of the show American Greed maybe the TV show and they recognized him and they like told the FBI and oh, then they shit. arrested him at Trail Days dude like how crazy is yeah. that they yeah, arrested yeah. him at Trail Days <clears throat> and what makes the story especially wild is he spent so many years on the AT and he wasn't one of those people that just like keeps to himself and lays low he was beloved yeah, by was... the AT community like and really? I was all the trail angels knew yeah. him like he, he had a great reputation let's make Definitely. that like perfectly clear like yeah. he you know, he did definitely did some shady stuff, but he did have a pretty good reputation on the trail. Like yeah. he never tried to, yeah. Like, I mean, I'll he leave it there. reinvented himself as like this lovable trail figure. And yeah. like, yeah, apparently stole a bunch of money, maybe killed allegedly, well, possibly, you know, Toss that in there. Let's, let's be clear. There was never any proof of yeah. anything there. Um, so I she think did, it's she probably died in a house. His wife died in a house fire, his, right? His first something like that okay yeah you're, you're or maybe maybe I his am. i don't quite remember but yeah one of yeah what <laughs> i can't remember how many wives he had but yeah yeah um someone died in a fire and there wasn't they were they never like linked him to it they never arrested him but it is just a little bit suspicious just due to the circumstances later when he yeah. stole the money and ran away um i think the most messed up thing he did was he just kind of ran away from his family right and um i think in that video i got some slack because i said that he abandoned his daughter his daughter was 22 at the time, so it's not like she was a, an infant, right? Yeah. Um, so I probably could have chosen my language a little bit better because people were like, hey, she's 22, like she's sure. fine. But it's like still, I mean, it's kind of fucked up to just like run away from your family. I yeah. Don't know. yeah, I feel like you get like a different crop of YouTube commenters when you go into the true crime realm because the people that are going to be watching oh, yeah. true crime are also probably obsessed with true crime. Yeah, yeah, I got some some interesting comments. And it's like, on one hand, like, I'm very grateful for all these people for, like, watching my videos. On the other hand, coming from, like, this through hiking, like, I call it, you know, hiking nerd world, I just have people writing shit that's just, like, obviously not true. Like, I would never go on trail like that's so dangerous or i would always like carry a gun like this kind of stuff and it's like i don't know i also understand if the only exposure you have to the appalachian trail is videos about people being killed on it you're probably yeah. gonna have you know a bias about it being like super dangerous yeah. and it's more ignorance um i don't know have it's you, it's it's kind of i kind of wrestle with that a little bit if you sure if you couldn't tell <laughs> have you addressed that aspect of it because like obviously you wouldn't describe the through hiking world as a dangerous no, place definitely not yeah have you addressed that in your youtube videos yeah there's been a few times where it's usually when i'm talking about the at specifically i'll say like you know you're still more likely to be harmed walking down any city street in the yeah. united states than you are on the at and, and walking down a city street is something that we would all do without even you know thinking, thinking twice, twice about, about it. it exactly yeah and so i do say that but you know uh, and i think a lot of these people come in with pre preconceived notions as well sure. and it's like i'm very torn because on one hand like i get it like they just don't know much and so it's hard for me to just sit here and criticize them yeah at the same time like i've hiked the at so like i do know that it's much safer than right. any city street so yeah. it's like it's it's tough <laughs> um patent pending idea for us yeah. we should do a playlist on our backpacker radio channel that is opposite of kyle hates hiking where we post videos that are hiker has pleasant day on at nothing bad happens <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the most fucking boring yeah. video in the world person hooks up in the shelter <laughs> man does 10 mile day nothing goes bad man hitchhikes <laughs> and gets into town successfully like gives handshake to guy as leaves <laughs> Uh, so I wrote this question before actually talking to you about your YouTube channel. So I have a sense about maybe where it's going to okay. go. Actually, I'll let Chance take it because this is her expertise. Which one is my question? The I'm on his YouTube at the moment. One. Oh, show notes. No, that's okay. Um, it keeps taking me from show notes to it yeah. and back. Oh, this is my question? I figured this is your genre. Yes. Okay. My <laughs> genre. Um, this is a fuck, Mary kill. Do you know how to play? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you look scared. I'm a little scared. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. Um, true crime, gear breakdowns, and general through hiking advice. Like uh, in terms of like videos? YouTube, categories YouTube videos. video categories. Oh. Okay. True crime. What gear, were the other two? Gear breakdowns and general through hiking advice. Gear breakdowns is in like, here's like what's in my pack or just like. I, I noticed tips. that there was a trend of just like gear focused videos in your yeah, video. Yeah. Okay. So just yeah. gear focused videos. Okay. Yeah. Oh man, um, probably 
kill the gear focus videos. I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean, everyone loves gear. Like, let's be honest, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit sick of gear. Yeah. I'm a little bit sick of gear. It doesn't come, you, the trail tales listeners, my podcast know that like, it doesn't come up super often for a hiking podcast. So, um, I mean, I'm going to marry the true crime stuff. I mean, that's what I'm doing. And so, oh my God, what's that terrible it's voice? It's your I'm YouTube. Hearing? It's talking to me. <laughs> Sorry. This is Chance's first time with technology. I've never used the internet before. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, and then I guess I guess I have to kill the through hiking. Advo- or sorry, sorry. I guess I have to fuck the through. That actually works out pretty well because I still like talking about that stuff. Like the more that. the more yeah. general like through hiking advice and stuff yeah it actually worked out pretty well those all fit <laughs> yeah, i feel painless. like usually when you do a fuck mary kill one of them you're kind of like i don't, I don't know if i really want to fuck this person but like i guess i gotta do it but <laughs> like, no that, that worked out pretty skirka well skirka fuck no see em, so you're always a step <laughs> above that that would hurt um so talking about gear related videos you um from what it looks like are the master of clickbait in terms of Whoa. like this entire <laughs> line of gear related videos in big red letters says no with an arrow pointing to a hiker and then like <laughs> you so in funny. the corner with like a look of disgust. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll give an example. The first video, the, the title is I'm sick, all caps, of these lies, all caps. Gear <laughs> companies are telling us. I am. What <laughs> lies are they telling us? I don't remember. To be See, honest. clickbait. <laughs> no, um, no, but here's the thing. Here's my, here's my thoughts on clickbait. <laughs> I don't think it's, I think clickbait is when you promise something in the title or thumbnail and then the video doesn't live up to it. Yeah. I don't think it's clickbait it, and everyone's going to disagree <laughs> with me on this, by the way. I'm well aware of that. Oh, we like clickbait. I don't, I, I actually agree with Kyle on this one. I, it's not clickbait click, if it lives up to it, even if it's a super flashy, yeah. you know, uh, dramatic thumbnail, if the video lives up to that. I is think that just, has, that just, got, got just has a different definition of it. And what do you what define my definition? Your definition is something that makes you click. Well, I think I'm uh, sick of these lies too, gear honestly. companies are telling me is me wanting to find out all the lies they're telling us. And it's probably that like your <laughs> raincoat won't get soaked through. And <laughs> I it guess, is. Yeah, I, I probably literally said that. Pretty <laughs> honestly. Yeah, you, there's an argument to be made there for sure. I'm not going to lie. I don't, I'm not anti-clickbait. We're trying to figure out how to make ours more like clickable. I think like the class, When I, I guess my, honestly, my opinion of clickbait is definitely skewed to as like a YouTuber. I, I feel like 99% of people would probably agree with you, Chance. Um, when I think of clickbait, I think of like a video or a, a thumbnail with like, a chick in a bikini and like her tits are hanging out and then you click on it and 99 percent of the video is like yeah. her husband like making a fire or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. i don't know <laughs> no, Just... I, I agree with you I, and i actually think buzzfeed is a publication that gets shit on more than it deserves but i've they have a lot of articles where like they promise something and you go through a lot of bullshit to get to what you're basically exactly what you just said well that pisses me up there's some where it's like you see an article and there's a like a story on it and you're like okay if i click more i'll see the rest of the story and then it's just like a carousel of different stories yeah. and the story and that was in ads. the thumbnail is not fucking in the carousel and i'm like yeah but i've noticed that people are really kind now they'll usually in the comment section post the end of the story sure. and yeah. just like ruin the it for the article evolves. yeah um but yeah so you've got a lot of these very um clickable thumbnails <laughs> How do you come up with the concept of how to portray one of these videos in a way that will make it um, attractive to someone who might watch? Um, I mean, I, I always try to give like good advice, obviously. And, you know, I have hiked quite a bit. So I, I think I have a pretty good, pretty good understanding of what I'm talking about. Um, one thing I, I try to do with those gear videos, I don't always do this, but a lot of the time I feel like a lot of other um, backpacking channels will give like very specific gear advice. They'll be like this backpack or like this headlamp. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's actually a lot of great value there. But with a lot of my gear videos, I tend to keep it more general. Um, and, and sometimes I will give specifics, but like specific gear items that I use and that I like and stuff. But a lot of the time it'll be more like, you know, don't set your tent up when, you know, you have a spot like this or like that. Or, or mm, I guess that's more camps. That's not even like gear exactly, but, um, you know, just like more general, like not specific items. Yeah. Like I just said, mm. um, which I think is something that people appreciated because it's a little bit different. Um, it's also not exactly, uh, there's not exactly a ton of like new advice there. Um, but you know, when you're catering more to beginners, they have to hear it from someone. And so, 
yeah. why not the guy with the really annoying thumbnail faces <clears throat> are you a gear nerd because like i there's different categories of gear people right like uh we're probably chance and i are probably in the same relative boat that we've done a lot of backpacking we've used a lot of gear and we have informed opinions about stuff and then you talk to someone like dan durston or andrew skirka who like nerd out on the mm -hmm. sp specific like fabric technology and that sort of thing where do you put yourself in that definitely type? not on their end okay yeah like i i went through gear phases for sure like actually back when i was writing for you um i was definitely more of like a gear nerd but then at some point i feel like i just hiked enough that i kind of know what works for me and so i'm not as like when you're satisfied with your gear you're not as like um or i guess i I'll speak for myself i'm not as like eager to go out and like research new stuff but every now and again if i'm like looking for a new piece of gear like last year after the pct i decided i wanted to go hike the washita trail and i wanted to use a hammock because i missed my hammock but i was like my old hammock sucks i need a new hammock mm -hmm. and so i for like a a month I like kind of went back into that gear mode and I was like researching hammocks and you know suspension systems and tarps and all this stuff but then once I got my stuff I was like all right I guess the gear phase is over for the moment so yeah. what's your gear closet look like right now <laughs> my gear closet is like a bunch of bins like in various places I got one in Hawaii I got a couple at my parents house you know collecting dust and I don't, I wish I had like a, I just, I've been moving too much to like have like a proper yeah. like gear closet or like gear storage area. It's just bins. <laughs> I imagine you've got brands reaching out to you yeah. all the time trying to get you to test their stuff. Yeah. What percentage of the time are you actually following through on that? Not often. Yeah. That's like, I feel like it, there's this people, people that watch like, you know, a lot of backpacking YouTubers, they think like. I feel like sometimes there's a little bit of resentment in the comments, not for most people, but every now and again, they're like, Oh, you're spoiled and you are spoiled. But what a lot of people don't understand is that like most of the time I'm not taking it. Like mm -hmm. most of the people that reach out to me, like I'm honestly not interested. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes I'll like, I'll be like, you can send me something, but like I, I might not use it. I might not put it in a video. Like I can't make any, it's always no strings attached. <clears throat> if there's ever like any, you know, financial financial compensation, like a sponsorship, mm -hmm. I always disclose that you yeah. have to, right? Because um, you'll get in a lot of trouble if you don't, and it's the right thing to do, obviously. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, most of the time I say no, to be honest. And also, to be fair, a lot of the time it's like stuff that I don't think any backpacker would be interested in. It's like a, yeah. I'll get companies just being like, hey, do you want to try our like beach beach ball? <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm yeah. good, dude. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Oh no, mine's I'm ch changing topics. Change sounded, topics. You sounded on point. Uh, I, already like forgot, I already forgot what it was. All right, well, forget you then. <laughs> um, you had mentioned when you were talking about like the general gear videos in in contrast to the super specific ones, how you'll do things like don't set up your tent at a place like this. Mm -hmm. You know, are you pulling from footage that you have from like your PCT hike or? past trail footage or are you coming up with a concept like you know backpacking mistakes not to make and then you're planning a backpacking trip around it to say okay i need to get film of this that and the other thing most so a lot of people do that but most of my like advice videos like that will be like me just like i call them talking head videos like i'm just you know basically just sitting down and talking and then i'll have b-roll from various trips just like you described um because i've filmed almost every backpacking trip except for one um from the past uh you know ever since i started my channel since 2019 pretty much and so i have a lot of just like b-roll footage that i'll use or i'll use like you know i don't know creative commons stuff that i find online and things like that so i'm i usually don't like do like informational videos from on trail usually when i'm doing an on trail video it's like this is my trip on whatever trail kind of stuff, which they don't do as well. If I was smart, I'd probably do it the other way around, but I don't know. Just in terms of marketing a video, what sort of educational process have you gone through? Because the, the point that Tron <laughs> brought up earlier is like- That's such an official way to play. Yeah. Have you seen my thumbnails? I'm gonna call I, that education. They're, they're, <laughs> I mean, say what you want they about work. them, but they grab your attention. Yeah, right? I, I know you understand that probably more than, more than your average person, but- I, it, did you take a course or is this just you picking up things from other people that you've appreciated or like what's been the process? There? It's a lot of trial and error. Uh, I studied digital art um, as in college. And so I had like some very basic Photoshop skills. And so 
that probably gave me a little bit of an edge at the beginning, but for the most part, it's just trial and error. Like I'll try something. In fact, actually for most videos, I didn't always do this, but now certainly in pretty much every, um, big YouTubers doing this, I'll make two, at least maybe usually more like three, four or five thumbnails for a video. And, um, and even different title ideas as well for the video, like different, like slight variations. And then after I post it, I'll, I'll see how it does. Cause YouTube, you know, you guys probably know like YouTube gives you the statistics about how often people are clicking on it mm. and I'll see like what that number's looking like. And if it's, this is a good tip for anyone who's thinking yeah. about doing YouTube someday, like, or doing it now, it's like, um, if the click through rate, they call it, isn't very good, then I'll swap the thumbnail and try a new one and I'll watch to see, you know, if the views are going up, um, very meticulous about it. I love thumbnails, dude. Like yeah. thumbnails are my favorite part about YouTube straight I, up. I love them. I love this. Cause you got it down to a science. Like a lot of people I think would consider it. It's like purely an art, but like there's also a science. Component. Oh, there's, it's like a mix between like creativity and like almost like psych, like you're, you're trying to like get in people's heads a little bit. Like, okay, what's going to be intriguing for people. And obviously you can't just like bullshit people. Like it still mm-hmm. has to, right. um, you know, work for the video. And so you have to like work within those parameters, but like still try to come up with something that's uh, intriguing. Like that's the, I was, that's the word I always remind myself, like what's going to be intriguing. Like what's going to make you like want to learn more about this. Mm. It's not always like what's going to be like the flashiest, although obviously that does, that does work. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's intrigue at the end of the day. What's the goal click through rate that you're after? Um, you know, YouTube gives you like when you post a new video, it compares it against your last 10 videos and it gives you a rank Okay. and then it, it displays your click through rate and your watch time. And if it's, if your click through rate's better than usual, it gives you a big green arrow and you get a nice endorphin rush and it feels great. And if it's worse than usual, it gives you a big fat, you know, mm-hmm. down arrow and it's gray and it makes you just want to delete your channel. <laughs> and so I honestly, I don't even pay attention to the actual number as much as I pay attention to just the arrow, the arrow. And you know, as time goes on the, the line, basically uh-huh. the trend of, you know, how it is. And you can compare click through rate between videos too. Um, and, and, you know, click through rate, it's going to vary in different niches and sure. you know different styles of videos and stuff too. So, yeah. so you can still alter the algorithm after the video has been out for a yeah. period of time just by changing the thumbnail. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it'll usually take some time. I don't, I tend to not do that that much because like I said earlier, I'll try to go with the best thumbnail after like the first couple hours of posting a video and YouTube actually is coming out with a feature soon. A lot of people already have it and it bugs me that I don't yet, but (laughs) a lot of people, even channels my size already have this feature where you can upload, I think it's up to three thumbnails and it will, Oh, so you can A, B, C, it's a, yeah, exactly. Exactly what Uh, it is. And like pretty much, or I don't know for sure. My understanding is that a lot of the, big, big creators, like, you know, bigger than me already have this and have for a while, but YouTube's still beta testing it. And so I even know like, like Dan Becker, my friend, another channel, like he's, he's a little bit bigger than me, but somewhat similar size. Like he already has it and like other people have it. And I'm like, YouTube, dude, I'm doing this all by hand. Like just give me this feature so I can (laughs) save some time. Yeah. How do you, cause you've mentioned a couple of times, like towards the beginning of the interview, the commenters. Right. And like, especially when you were trying to clarify your PCT hike, you know, because the commenters have said certain things. I know about the commenters. They're ruthless. <laughs> yeah. How do you continue to motivate yourself to put this stuff out when you are getting that kind of negativity? Because I feel like you have to just be like unashamedly, yeah. like, you know, confident to do it. Do you get a lot of negative comments? Yeah. More I, so I now. I size you have to. But... Yeah. More so now. Um, I don't know. Like, I knew when I started YouTube, even before anybody watched my videos, like I knew that um, I was going to get bad comments. It just it does not matter. You could be the best YouTuber in the world, the most wholesome person in the world, which I'm definitely not, by the way, and you will get mean comments. And so I knew that going into it. And the first couple ones started rolling in after a while. And it was actually like kind of encouraging because, you know, they say like, you know, if you have haters, like you're doing something right, dude. Yeah. And so it was actually like a little bit encouraging at first, um, you know. I, I don't love them now, but um, it doesn't really bother me too much. The the ones that are like just super mean, like definitely don't bother me because I'm like, I know these people, they write this and then they move on and they forgot they wrote it 10 seconds later. Mm-hmm. Like they'll literally watch my next video and be like, oh, like nice. Like they, they, they don't, they're not put, they're not invested in it. They don't care. Like right. they're just, they're just losers and they're just writing some, some bullshit and yeah. moving on. The ones that get to me are when people write stuff that's 
just like ignorant like that they're they're confident they're so confident in it but it's just wrong and i just know it's wrong yeah. and it just like those are the ones that kind of bug me not even the mean ones that's interesting because those are the ones that don't bug me at all because i can shoo those off it's one like when it, it hits on my own insecurity it's like oh that was like twisting a knife yeah in my gut. i don't know you, you i mean you just got to have some thick skin yeah and like it definitely it bugs some people some people are pretty used to it um I mean, I'm pretty used to it at this point. I, I still, I don't, I don't take pleasure and I don't like it, sure. but, um, I don't know. To do what you do, you have to oh, yeah. at least get some level of thing. Yeah. Skin. And I was well aware of that. Like I said, going into it and I think I was just happy to get to the point where I was getting mean comments, you know? And obviously it goes without saying too, that like the vast majority of comments are positive too. Mm. And so you, you know, if like the majority of my comments were like negative, then I think I would probably take it a little bit, sure. a little bit harder. And yeah. I'd, I'd probably do some, um, self-examination at that point. But, yeah. um, you know, when most of it's positive and it's just a few people in there just like chirping you, it's like, whatever, yeah. dude. It seems like now this is full time, right? Yep. Okay. This is a two-parter. Yep. Um, and how, I guess, how do I phrase this question? Um, something that's that I've thought about is the transition from something like this being a hobby to being full time. Like when mm -hmm. I got off the AT, I mean, I made a couple gear videos. Those are the ones that did best for me personally. I think that's work. Like in my mind, it categorized it as this yeah. isn't fun, but I could see the light of the tunnel where it was like, if I keep doing this and I keep this consistency, the growth is there. However, with working full time, you have to put a lot of hours in to do this on the side. So where I've always found it being a little bit of a catch 22 is the more you work at it, the bigger it gets, the more you have to work at it. Mm -hmm. But like, then you have to take a huge step back when you leave something full time to focus on this full time. How did you balance and what was kind of the timeline of you taking this and saying, I'm ready to go full time with this? Yeah. So I was working a full time job for first almost three years on my channel to that math. I'm really bad with simple math, which is ironic what because my, I was a software engineer, okay. <laughs> which is why that's ironic, but, um, that pays well, even if you're the worst at it, you're still, yeah. Doing I mean, I was well. doing all right. I was getting paid pretty bad for a software engineer, honestly, oh, really? getting paid still like totally fine. Like I'm yeah. not complaining about how much yeah, yeah. I was paid, but <laughs> we were anyways. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so I did that for a number of years and I would work on YouTube, you know, it was like my side hustle. And, and I got to the point where I was making some money from it, um, but it wasn't like a full-time amount. And then in 2022, I knew I wanted to do the PCT. And so that was when I quit my job to go through hike. And so I guess from like early 2022 on is when I've been full-time. But to be honest, during the PCT and for a few months after that, I wasn't really making like a full-time amount of money. I was still making some and I was very grateful for that. But my idea was like, I'm single. I don't have kids. Obviously I'm still relatively young financially. Like I was, you know, software engineer, like I was doing okay. I had a pretty good amount saved up or at least enough, you know, to get by. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I'm ever going to try to make a run at this full time, like this is, this is my chance. Mm. And so after the PCT, instead of going and finding another job, I was like, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to just try to make this work. Yeah. And for a few months, you know, I kind of broke even. And then when I started the mystery videos, that's when it really blew up. And that's when I started to be like, okay, now I have enough money to hire an editor and, um, you know, invest in other things and just like, and it just like really grew and like, it wasn't a master plan, dude. I just, I worked my ass off for sure. But yeah. like, I think it was a, a combination of luck for sure. And just in art in hard work. And, uh, I don't know. I'm just like, it still blows my mind, but it is a lot of work. Like I get people, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I get people commenting me and like, Oh, like get a real job or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I work, I guarantee you I work more than you. Like sure. it, it Especially is, a, it's a lot on, of work. You have to. Yeah. 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 I yeah. remember that with Appalachian trials. I, I ate through basically all my savings for two years. My competitive advantage was that like, I was so, it's such a bad place in life that I couldn't imagine doing anything mm -hmm. else. So it was just like sink or swim. And I was able to yeah. swim before it, I, 
basically ran to the edge of the cliff. Um, I still feel like that, dude. Even I'm doing okay now. Like I still feel like that. Like it's so much. It's so much better than like working a, a desk job. And I'm just like, man. I don't want to ever, I don't want to go back. Don't make me go back. I don't want to go back. Like yeah. I want to get married and have kids at some point in like the, you know, not super, super far future. And like, if I want to do that and still be able to do this, like sure. I'm just like, it's a grind for How sure. Old are you? Uh, 27. Oh, you got plenty of time. Right? Yeah. yeah. And because there's so much now that rests on it, cause it's not just a hobby. It's like your full time thing. Mm-hmm. Do you ever yeah, get anxiety when you post a video and it doesn't do as well as oh you yeah oh yeah big time <laughs> big talk, time talk about that yeah it sucks but it's also just like not that bad like unless it's like a total bomb but it, i hate to say it, like i kind of referred to it earlier about those arrows when you post a video like the yeah. green up arrow the gray down arrow i mean i'm sure you guys see them too with like the backpacker radio youtube and stuff we're, you're gonna have to give us a coaching lesson <laughs> on air with we're, youtube because we we're, just we're terrible at it yeah well um it it, I hate how much descriptions. <laughs> We're just starting. I'm like, we are just we suck starting. Shit. <laughs> suck this is. <laughs> I can use some text. I can use um, some text. We are just starting. Like, why not both? Yeah, sure. We could be just starting We're and still sucking and shit. We're <laughs> Basically, just make cringy faces in your thumbnail. <laughs> um, I mean, you should see some bit. of the thumbnails that have been chosen on <laughs> social media, Mara, for me. Um, <laughs> There's some real gems out there. I Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So, okay. So you post a video. Let's walk you through a scenario. You post a video. You're like, this is gold. Engagement is total garbage. Yeah, it sucks. What does the next 24 hours look like for you? Uh, I mean, at this point, I'm I'm okay at brushing it off. It also depends on what... It, it depends on how much it bombs, and it depends on how much I anticipated it bombing. Mm. So, you think this one's going to rock? Uh, that That's the worst, right? Because there's sometimes where... I'll, I'll post something and I'm just like, I just don't think the thumbnails that great with this one or, or I just don't think it's like my best video. And so it doesn't do that well. And I'm like, it's, it sucks, but like, I kind of anticipated it. Yeah. It's the ones that I thought were like re- going to do really good. And I'm like, Oh, this thumbnail is fucking sick, dude. Yeah. And then it bombs and I'm like, Oh dude, yeah. <laughs> it, it hurts for sure. But you just get used to it. And it honestly gets me a little motivated sometimes too, to be like, okay, I really got to knock this next one out of the park. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like a, I hate how much my mental health is tied to like how good my, not even in general, my channel's doing, but just how good my last yeah, video did. Sure. That Cause, was cause it's also the other way around. Me. Like if you post a video and it does really well, I, I hate to say it, but it's almost like taking a drug. Like it, it just gives you like an endorphin boost <laughs> yeah. for like the next like couple days. And I'm just like, dude, I'm the best YouTuber ever. <laughs> like, you know, and it just like, it's a wide swing sure. of emotions for sure. How much do you attribute the success of a video to the actual quality of the video? And how much is, how much of it is just a luck component? Like there's definitely some luck for sure. Um, I mean, even just in terms of like, even algorithm aside, it's like, even just in terms of like the means you have to make videos, you know, you have to buy equipment and, you know, some people can't even afford that. And so like, there's that luck aspect. It's, um, you know, there's, there's other luck, like just where you are in your life. If you're in a place where you can find the time to go and invest that in making videos consistently. Um, so there's a lot of luck for sure. Um, I think that, I think that for me, like I, I put myself in a position where I was able to take advantage of the luck. So I couldn't have done it without luck and I couldn't have done it without hard work either. Sure. It's, it's both of those things to get to where you've gotten. I'm not implying at all that it's luck. Oh no, no, no. no. Like yeah, one no, video to the next. Way. I feel like at, at least from what I know through the trek, cause there's a lot of, I, I meet with Owen twice per week. We do a meeting on like the editorial plan. And there's a lot of times where there's an article where it's super well executed. It's a subject that like, I feel very passionately about and it just flops. Yeah. And then there's another one that we both feel like wishy washy about and it just takes off. And I don't know if that's luck or if that's just not us having like the most keen understanding of whatever the elements are that make something yeah. successful. But I feel like I run into that so often that I've learned that sometimes, um, you just have to take a lot of shots and yeah. a certain percentage of them are going to hit and some of them are going to Oh, exactly. It's like no, you can't have every single video or every single article be your number one, right? right? And so there's definitely a component, you know, to that yeah, for sure. But yeah. it really just – it just varies. I think it's both. And I think if you, like, work hard enough, you'll be in a place to take advantage of the luck. But w- without the luck or without the hard work, at least for myself um, – 
I don't think that I would have gotten to where I am. But it could also all be gone tomorrow. Like, you know, that's a good I, mindset. To keep, I still feel it keeps like you like like I kind of said a few minutes ago. Like, you know, in planning for the future, like I still. Like, I still feel like I have a lot of work to do. Like, I, I don't feel comfortable. Like, I it, I it still feels, like, kind of unstable. And so, you know, I'm working, like, very, very hard. And I hope it – I hope I can continue. We'll, well see. <laughs> kudos to you. It's honestly kind of mind-blowing to me to learn that you were a software developer because there's nothing overly technical about what you do. No. But like I said, I did I did study digital art a little bit in college. But, but honestly, it wasn't even that much, like – I didn't even do any video editing in college Mm. and I had done a little bit before college, just like hobbyist. Like I had a YouTube channel when I was in like middle school. And so I've always like taken an interest in it. And I feel like, you know, even though, you know, coding and making videos are very different, there's still just like a general knowledge of like how to use software, how to use computers that I do think definitely helped me. Right. So I felt like I was able to like learn a lot of the programs um, probably easier than someone who doesn't have that technical background. Mm. And so I, I do think it helped me to some degree, but there's also, I mean, most YouTubers probably didn't study like film or any of that stuff. So yeah. I think this is definitely not a, a requirement for someone who sure. wants to do that. Yeah. Well, you just strike me as a guy who is eager to learn, who's driven. Cause I mean, like we mentioned, you were a, a great writer for us. You've got a successful podcast and your most successful medium is video. Yeah. And then your background is all software <laughs> development. Like that's a pretty wide span. So it definitely says a, it's a big testament to just who you are as a person. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> that's so nice. I appreciate that. For me, this is fun. It's just like you both complimenting each other back and forth. <laughs> yeah, we'll stop it. I'll say something. <laughs> about you now. And Chance, your book was great. Yeah, where and are my Miles compliments? Miles be great. Zach, thank me for something. Chance, you are always there. <laughs> this podcast what would, I can get. This podcast, I'm here a thank or you. No offense, Zach, but this podcast would not be what it is without you. I totally Let's be agree. honest. That's I know. what I'm looking for. Let's be honest. That's nice. It's, I like that. I like you. You can stay. <laughs> hard for me to compliment Chance, especially on air, but she's pretty good. <laughs> You're here. She's great. I don't give you many. You guys are both good. <laughs> you guys are. You guys are. You, you guys are the biggest in this space. We show our love through heat. <clears throat> um, shifting gears, I think. I've noticed with your podcast titles, they're similar to your YouTube formula. As of late, especially. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that meant to draw people in or is it sort of tongue in cheek? What's the... It's both. The okay. podcast is... I mean, of course, it's going to vary on the topic and the guests and stuff. But generally speaking, the podcast is much less serious than uh, the mystery videos on my YouTube channel. And so, yeah, it's it's tongue in cheek. And it's also trying to draw people in too, of course. Um, I just, over the past few months, I finally started posting my podcast on YouTube. Before that, it was just for years, it was just audio only. And it was kind of an afterthought for a while. I'm not going to lie. I took like over a year off from like late 2021 through most of 2022. But um, just over the past few months, I was like, dude, why don't I, I, like, I obviously I know like a decent amount about YouTube. Like I should, why am I not posting this on YouTube? Like, and so I started and you know, with that comes a little bit more drama in the titles, I think, in, in the thumbnails. Yeah. Are you, are they in on these jokes? Cause you got a video with a red arrow <laughs> yeah. pointing to someone's face and the, the big <laughs> yellow text says screwed. And then the, yeah. the, yeah, the title says it. roasting a naive Appalachian trail vlogger. Yeah. He, he knew that title before <laughs> we even recorded actually. And I always send people the thumbnails before, before like, it, you think that one's bad. Good. Oh, My one with scrolling? Eric Hansen, I literally photoshopped him into a mugshot. Like I, I thought, made that, that looks very <laughs> realistic. The yeah. insane consequences for a mistake in a national park. Yeah, which that that story is like quite dramatic to be honest. What happened there? Basically, he he got. I guess it's not my story, but the um, the federal government like really came down on him like pretty hard for a pretty simple mistake. He he camped out of bounds in Grand Canyon National Park, hmm. which like. You know, like give him a fine, you know, I get that. Mm-hmm. But they, I, because he was a YouTuber, essentially, my understanding anyways, yeah. um, they they came after him pretty hard and they, they tried to prosecute him as to the full extent of what they could, which they was, make an example which it. was a class B misdemeanor, which I believe was like a $5,000 fine and up to a year in jail. And Jeez. at first they were trying to go for that and he was able to negotiate um, a plea that I think just ended up with like a $1,000 fine. So he didn't go to jail, but they... They tried to make an example out of him, basically. He'd be a good guest, by the way. Like, he's, it's a, pr- I don't, I don't, honestly, I'm not sure if he'd want to talk about it anymore because I kind of think at this point he wants to, like, move on and just, sure. like, make his videos because that's obviously not what defines him. Yeah. 
but he might want to. Okay. Yeah. It would be a good title for you guys. So yeah. He's got the red <laughs> hair. It's pretty fucked up in my opinion what hair. happened to him. Yeah. And, and he's a bad, he's a badass hiker too. I mean, he was the Ooh. host of out, or, uh, um, Epic Trails on Outsides TV channel for a while. He's, he's a good guy. Oh, Tell me about this video. It is a thumbnail of a robot face with a speech bubble coming out of its mouth that says, ultralight hikers are jerks. <laughs> and the title is asking AI about yellow blazing ultralight and more absurd hiking dot dot yeah dot. actually that was done with this gentleman right here um no that was uh we just went on chat GPT and we were just asking it like bullshit <laughs> like we were just kind of testing it to see what it knew we were like how how long is the Appalachian Trail or like stuff like that and sometimes it would get it right sometimes i think it said that the pct was twice as long as the appalachian trail which is yeah. not true yeah. it is longer but it's not twice as long and then we were like asking it for like song lyrics about through hiking or poems and i think at one point it was like give me an ultralight gear list you know we're asking all this stuff to chat, chat, chat gbt it was like give me an ultralight gear list but make it all like wrong it just like mm. stuff like that and we just went through it and it was fun honestly i think we're gonna do another one soon <laughs> Um, look, I want to go back to that, but look, there's Elise and she's got a red arrow pointing to her and it says, what the <laughs> hell is up with Continental Divide Trail? <laughs> Elise saw it? Yeah. Gosh, nice. Um, okay. Back to this, uh, asking AI about yellow blazing ultralight and more absurd hiking things. What are your opinions about yellow blazing ultralight and more absurd hiking things? Oh man. Um, I'm not trying to yellow blaze personally. I mean, people can, people can do what they want obviously, but you know, I, I, I don't want to do it. I would feel bad. Um, it wouldn't not just feel bad. It just like, that's not what it's about for me. But you know, if someone's, if I learn someone's yellow blazing, I'm not going to be like, yo, fuck you dude. Like I'm obviously not going to like make a big deal about it or anything. Cause it's up to everybody to do their own thing. And then what was the other thing? Um, ultralight. Ultralight. I try to go ultralight. I'm not the most ultralight, but I try What's to base weight. Uh, it's usually around 10 pounds, but as again, some commenters will point out, I do not count my camera equipment in that. Which is about <laughs> why would you not? Why? <laughs> because most people aren't. I mean, in terms of like YouTube, like most people aren't carrying like three pounds of camera gear, right? Yeah. But and you so, are. But I am. So technically, <laughs> I guess I'm not ultra. Right then it's like 13 pounds. I'm not hiding it. You know, I'm not yeah, hiding yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You kind of are when you say 10 pounds. Without, <laughs> but I but I always give this caveat. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Busted, dude. Calling Kyle hates hiking out. There's your title. You right said there. you were nervous. I just wanted to get my money's worth. No, you're good. <laughs> I mean, it's fair. Like, I don't know. What I, What's the origin to Kyle hates hiking? Yeah. So, when I was in college, there was a kid. I didn't even know him. I wouldn't even recognize him if I saw him on the street today. I don't even remember his first name. But there was just like this kid that I had like mutual friends with at my college. I think he was in the outing club, and his Instagram name was like x whatever his name is hates the outdoors and i just kind of made a mental subconscious mental note of that and then a couple years later after my at through hike um around the time i probably started the podcast i needed a new instagram handle and so i kind of ripped it off and i was like <laughs> kyle hates hiking and also like there's a word for this i can't remember what it is but like just like the way it flows like k-a-h kyle hates hiking i don't know but it flows well it also encompassed the um, the style of my content at the time, which was very like goofy, uh, not so serious. You know, tongue in cheek, it kind of fit with that too. Mm -hmm. And so I actually had it as my Instagram handle for a while before I started my channel. And then once I started my channel, that was the obvious, the obvious move was to just keep the same name. So that's, I basically ripped it off from this kid. <laughs> I, I, sometimes I want, I've said this in a few podcasts before now. So I, sometimes I wonder if he's heard about it and he's like, that motherfucker. <laughs> That'd be kind of Probably fun. Not, let's be honest. I know. I'm reluctant to share this. I know a a prominent hiker whose uh, Instagram handle was blank hikes, and he noticed a lot of other people using that after he came to prominence, and resented them <laughs> for <laughs> using that formula. You gotta tell me who it is off there. I will. I have a guess, <laughs> and it's so out there. <clears throat> I'm not gonna we, say yeah, it. Yeah, we can. This is a this is fun. <laughs> Make a good. T no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, that's exciting and fun. Um, hey, I'm on here. Look, that's me. <laughs> oh, you have the red arrow. Nice. <laughs> let's I see, got let's 24 see. views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when I. That's when I. <laughs> that's when I really re-uploaded. <laughs> like, Hell yeah! <laughs> I like uploaded all the old episodes once I started the YouTube channel, and yeah. I literally just spent like 
a week straight just <clears throat> uploading audio only YouTube videos. I have a request for this episode. What's that? Will you make the thumbnail for us? Ooh. I can try. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're ready for some red arrows. Yeah. I'll I want some... it to be the most Kyle hates hiking style. Yeah. Okay. We can, we can do that. We can yeah. do that. Hella <laughs> Get it. Give me like a good face yeah, or exactly. something like that. Exactly. Um, I had a question, but Chance was on a video roll, so I didn't want to. I thought my questions were great. They are great. <laughs> How long have we been going? Do I have time to pee? Yeah, yeah. go pee. Okay, I'll be quick. Yeah. Chance and I will just keep the conversation going. Sure. How's your day going? I appreciate you, by the way. I appreciate you. Well, you were concerned that I didn't. No, I just wanted to hear you say it. Okay, I do. I'm just fishing that's, for that's, compliments. I'm, yeah, I'm at the end of my <laughs> compliment rope right I'm now. I'm watching you guys compliment each other. I'm feeling know. a little left I, out. It, 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 there was a lot of love ha yeah. happening there. I would have felt uncomfortable in your seat, though. Yeah. It's it's very easy to give compliments and terrible to receive yeah, them. Yeah, it was fun to watch. Yeah. It was good for me yeah. on my part. I, the best way to receive a compliment is to do, deflect it. Yeah. Just turn it right back to the other person. I like reading them. Like when you're not around people, but like in a way that you don't have to respond because that also stresses yeah. me out. It's funny we're talking about YouTube comments and he's talking about the majority of them being pleasant is like all it takes is one negative one to just wipe out Ruin all the positive day. ones. Yeah. Yeah. Don't I know? It's and th they do that for that reason. But you know. should we watch one of his most clickbaity titles? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Home. Though YouTube might not like that. Why? I don't think you're allowed to play their content because they're not earning the ad revenue. I'm sure we would have, quote unquote, permission, right? Okay. <laughs> or do you think that they'll take down our... We're probably not big enough to be on the radar, so probably we can do not. whatever we want. Let's see this most popular... Oh, I'm sick of these lies. I want to know what these lies are. Yeah, let's I'm get sick them. of these let's lies. Dive into those lies. He's going to come back and turn we're, around we're and immediately leave. I want to see... Oh, it's, it's loading. Tickets, this is an ad. <laughs> Hold, please. So we're making Kyle money right now. Yes. These are lying to you, those <laughs> mother... Oh, hey. that's pretty cool. Ooh, who, whose Come front on. flip is that? Is that's it yours? Now, oh, that was my friend Flossie. Okay. Day, what Which, not what video is this? <laughs> Sick of these say, lies. A lot of rhymes, apparently. I will say that out of oh, all of the different industries and out of all the different products, I feel like backpacking gear companies are pretty fair. You really want to know about these lies, huh? <laughs> Johnson's is very into it. Just putting out no. a big old pile of BS sometimes. <laughs> okay, like, this I is mean, killing me, dude. You know how painful it is to... I mean, you guys are talking about how you yeah. don't like to hear yeah. yourself. We don't, we don't listen <laughs> no, we, we did talk about that beforehand. How you'd I mean, back I'm, I'm really here for it, this. but it's tough. I have well, a question, and tell me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you're very plugged into the um gossip is the wrong word but like you're plugged into the scene and through hiking like you know uh what's how I get I, around dude how do i how do i phrase this you're, you're good at like getting popular people people on your podcast and like i i noticed you do this with your youtube videos too uh i'm old and i've like retracted from social media entirely so <laughs> i want to know what's the latest like through hiking through hiking social media gossip right now oh dude i don't know man I don't know. I feel I feel like I more create gossip that's not actually go or drama that's not Sweet, actually drama. Yeah. Right yeah. Ooh, let's make a rumor. What'd you do? I mean, <laughs> we could have we could have had a true one if you had kept going about the Instagram handle. Instagram handle mystery hikes. Whoever it was. Oh yeah. Well, no. Yeah. I, we, no, can't, I know. we can't make up real things. Yeah. <laughs> we could make something up. Um, let's see. It doesn't see. have to be negative, but like. I know yeah, that what is who's, the, who's what is the, the current guy? Right oh yeah, top three hot hikers. Not like in physical attractiveness, okay. but like what's say. hot right now. <laughs> I mean, this is guy. Uh, so he recently changed his style a little bit. He used to be more like through hiking. Um, nowadays, it's actually a lot more serious stuff. Like I would personally, I would call it mystery kind of videos. And speaking of hotness, he is like very hot. Um, <laughs> it's physically, <laughs> mentally. Um, spiritually even, uh, uh, he actually shares my name and my body. His name's Kyle. Oh, uh, he's <laughs> catch on to that one. Did everyone know? Yeah. Oh. I think Jessica got first. I knew they were laughing. I thought they were laughing at this guy, but I was like, what's like, I've never been called mentally hot. That's insane. <laughs> the last time I played, paid attention to social media, like, uh, uh, twerk. He was the hotness, right? Well, Lil Skittle was really hot too for a while. Yeah, I sure. mean, I think she that's, still is that's another, pretty hot. That's another good example. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Elise is getting hotter. I mean, all of this, not physically. <laughs> <laughs> Elise makes good videos. I've yeah. been watching some of her videos. She's been stepping up had, the social games. Yeah, I had her on 
on my podcast a little while too, a little, a little while ago. I'm trying to think, I mean, to be honest, I'm less plugged in with this stuff than I feel like I used to be since I've been more focusing on the mystery, hmm. the mystery videos. But if I could shout some people out, I mean, yeah. Dan Becker, he's not definitely not new. Like he's been killing it for a while. Um, but he's like a, a good friend of mine. I used to give him like a lot of shit in my videos, like for like all in good fun. Like that was, was he a, your friend at the point you were giving him um, shit? Um, he became friends with me because I was giving him shit, okay. I think. But um, he actually is like a, a good friend and yeah. and uh, has given me like he's he's been like a mentor for me, honestly, when it comes to like the YouTube thing. That's nice. Um, he's really cool. I mean, they're all I've yet to meet like a a backpacking YouTuber I didn't like, to be honest. Like uh, Taylor New Hampshire is one I want to plug. Have you guys heard about her before? I yeah. saw her on your thumbnails. She's um, <laughs> you see her on my thumbnails. She's done the AT twice in the past like couple years she's she's awesome um that would be a channel i would if anyone listening hasn't seen her channel i'm sure a lot of people have because she's definitely one of the most popular at vloggers if not probably the most popular from the last few years mm. but she's awesome you guys should try to get her on i don't know if she she'll be coming through here anytime soon but where's she based out of new hampshire ah. yeah she's awesome um i really like her channel let's give yeah let's give elise some more former backpacker yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, no, she's, fans here. yeah like i've i've watched a number of her videos and and she's doing she's doing really well yeah i mean everyone's cool like it's all it's all cool like i said there really isn't anybody out there that i'm like oh like this person fucking sucks like i wasn't good. i wasn't necessarily darwin's looking for back now dude i guess at this point when this comes out it'll be old news but darwin's making videos again and he's awesome i met him for the first time at pct trail days uh this, this latest one back in august and like that was super cool and he's been he's also like helped me a lot especially when my channel is smaller like with youtube advice and just general advice and i know you guys have had him on mm -hmm. twice is yeah it? yeah times, yeah yeah, yeah. Darwin's a man super nice super nice guy you are currently living in hawaii yeah <laughs> are you doing a lot of hiking while you're out there honestly not as much as i probably should um kyle hates hiking i mean <laughs> let's be honest yeah it sucks no <laughs> Yeah, I've been doing some. There's not really too much backpacking there. There is some. There's the call out trail on Kauai, but I'm living on o Oahu. So I've only been over to Kauai once. Me and my girlfriend did um the call out trail back in March of I guess it'll be last year by the time this comes out. I've heard the exposure on that one's pretty intense. It's like there's some cliffs. There's yeah. some cliffs. Like they call it crawler's ledge. Uh -huh. It's it's definitely not for the faint of heart. I think it gets a little more hype than it actually deserves. Uh, you know. Do you struggle with exposure at all? No. Okay. Well, actually, are we, are we? Sorry, are we talking heights or like? What do you mean by exposure exactly? Uh, just steep drop offs. No. Falls. Th those don't bother me too much. Okay. When it comes to exposure, like being super far above tree line, that bugs me a little bit. That makes me a little nervous. I've only hiked in Colorado a little bit. I'm mostly like an East Coast hiker, uh -huh. and you know, PCT. So I have some experience with it, but like being exposed like Colorado style with like thunderstorms rolling in that scares the hell out of me. Sure. I really haven't had like a, anything like that yet out West. I thought of for our, for when we do this and he makes the thumbnail, Yeah, <laughs> Kyle hates hiking gets exposed on backpacker radio. <laughs> so that's a little bit of clickbait. That's where you get into that. Yeah. But technically, you know, it's a fine line there. <laughs> Talking about exposing things. I heard you really like your trail name. What is it? <laughs> <Too> <laughs> much. Like, it sucks. <laughs> it's a. <laughs> it's Nar Nar. Are you gonna make me tell the story? Yeah. yeah. This was <laughs> this some intel we got before yeah. when you were in the bathroom. The oh, first time. you son. Of, okay. I sent you there for a reason. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> if I had, first of all, if I had to give any advice for anyone who's gonna be through hiking in the future and doesn't have a trail name yet, be picky and don't choose one until a you like it and b it has a good story. Because you're going to be telling this story over and <laughs> over and fucking over. And so if it's a shitty story and people are just like, oh, it's it sucks. It's the worst. Like, my trail name is Nar Nar. I got it when I was 16. And I just had some gnarly blisters. And I'm um, sorry, I'm going a little hot there. Oh, you're good. You're good. This gets me fired up. <laughs> um, I just had some gnarly blisters. And there's these guys in Kid Gore Shelter on the AT slash LT, Southern Vermont. And they were like, they were like smoking weed and shit. And like, you know, I was 16. So that was significant to me at the time. And they were like, dude, like your, your blisters are so gnarly. Like you should be nar nar. And like, I quit my long trail through hike attempt the next day. But I was like, that's my <laughs> trail name. For, <laughs> well, no, not because of that, but just because I sucked. But um, 16 year olds gets hazed by pot smokers on the AT. Yeah, <laughs> Quits trail. 
<laughs> no, I thought it was cool. I thought it was so Arrow cool. Arrow pointing to a blister. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> you guys are learning, dude. Your YouTube numbers are going to go way up after this. I'm going to be so yeah. good at this. Yeah. <laughs> we do suck at YouTube. Yeah. It's uh, it for thank, we have you, room to thank you for everyone that listens via audio, but no one watches it on YouTube. And this actress, <laughs> this is in no way a knock at Sarah. Sarah, your videos are fantastic. Yeah, it's no, more it's so just, like us figuring out how to use it's, YouTube, it's, not the quality. It's not more so us. It is us. We make <laughs> yeah. all the decisions. We are the problem. It's me. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, my trail name sucks. <laughs> Should we talk about backpacking a little bit? I feel like we've talked a lot about YouTube and all the social media. We stuff. can ask about this one. I don't know which one you're. Um, that's another hottie. Hot, hot. I don't. I don't know. I, we must be looking at different show notes right now. No, mine's the right oh, ones. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. What are you looking at? Sorry, porn. I was. I was actually. Yeah, I'm looking at. <laughs> have you heard of Pornhub? <laughs> <laughs> You should see my thumbnails That's what Zach right does now. during every interview. <laughs> <laughs> Just puts it on mute. <laughs> What's his stepsister thing? <laughs> anyway. Uh, speaking of stepsister. <laughs> That's the rumor we're going to start. <laughs> Zach watches porn during the interview. <laughs> Just me like this. <laughs> All, right. All right. That needs to be a sticker. <laughs> uh, we were disinformed that you have a hot take on trail families in general. Slash fams. The, the the concept or the term? I don't know. Oh, it must be the latter. Yes, the term. The uh, latter. It, it's tramley, dude. I fucking hate the term <laughs> tramley. Like, that's the most... Oh. Cri- like, let's be honest. Like, yeah. that's, that's the cringiest thing. Like, I love the hiker lingo. I know some people don't even like any of it. I'm usually there for it. Like, hiker trash is cool. Yeah. But the, just the term tramley. Maybe it's just because I'm not cool enough to have a real tramway, but I don't know. Like, I just hate that term so much. I will say that's been um, one of the – it doesn't stick for me. I always refer to it as trail family, but I, obviously I know what you're talking about. But, yeah, the tramley feels a little – Tramley? It's just – it's just. It like, reminds oh, me my of God, my tramley. I got to catch up with my tramley. Like, I, yeah. I can't do it, man. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. I have caught myself using it a couple times, though, <laughs> recently. And, 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 like, I'll, like, kick myself. I'll be like, oh, fuck. See, it's even – I don't even like it. And it's still, I'm idiot, still starting idiot, to use idiot. it. I'm going to – nice call back there. Uh, I'm going to go with the challenge. We're now almost 250, 240 episodes deep. I don't think I've ever said trambly other than just acknowledging the fact that I haven't said the word. <laughs> I, because I don't – I agree with you. I don't think it's a – it's, like, a – it's a ling- – it's a – not a sticky lingo. I also think, like, it reminds me of a tram, like a train tram. Sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but I can't say I've never said it. I'm sure that there's probably been a time I've said yeah. it. I'm going to say that I haven't. Have you said we, it on the podcast, Chance? I don't I don't <laughs> think so. I could be exposed, if though. If she has, someone go clip <laughs> that, If someone please. clips it, Chance exposed. <laughs> <laughs> Use his word. <laughs> okay, so long trail. You didn't finish that? I did. I did, did finish the long trail. PCT, I didn't. PCT is really the only thing i haven't finished i guess the northeast 115 the peak bagging list but that was more just lack of effort not necessarily because of quitting others of lack quitting of interest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 uh so this is one that's near and dear to our hearts that hopefully this will reveal itself later <laughs> in the, the one year you, said you didn't want to talk about i know but i just i want <laughs> I, I don't want like a quick i don't want the run through on your entire hike but i want the quick sales pitch on why someone should want to hike this is the northville placid trail Oh, okay. Do you, do you know much about it, you guys? My mom's a superintendent in Northville. Oh, it, really? Yeah. We live right, I never she lives that. right by the trailhead. Have you ha- have you done it? Not yet, but I am pumped full of propaganda every time I go home. Wow. Well, I might I might talk you down a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, it's an amazing trail. Um, the Adirondacks are just hard, dude. It's hard there. The weather, like, you're going to get rained on. It's only, what I want to say... What time of year did you do it? I did it. See, I did it late, late uh, September, so... My reasoning was the Adirondacks are also in other parts of the Northeast too, are just known for the black flies in the late spring, early summer. And even throughout the year, the, the bugs are terrible in the Adirondacks throughout the summer, I should say the warmer months. Um, and I was like, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, late September, get some foliage, dude. It's, you know, that was the reasoning, but it was cold and it rained for a good chunk of that trail. Hmm. Um, I actually, I tried to hike it once many years ago. I think I wrote an article about this actually back in the day. Um, type in like uh, Northfield Plastic Trail, Danamora something. But um, I was I was still in college, like right after my freshman year of college. So I must have been you know 19 at the time. Me and a friend tried to hike it, and we did like 80 miles of the 130 or 140 or whatever it is, or 90 miles maybe. But um, 
there was two prisoners that escaped out of a maximum security prison in uh, northern New York, Danamora. Okay. Foreshadowing your future career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, right? No, but, like, these these guys, like, busted out. It was a huge deal. Like, the governor was up there the next day. Like, you know, this is a maximum security prison. Like, uh-huh. these guys, like, you don't want to fuck with these guys. And, like, they busted out somehow. There's, there's, like, a TV series about it and stuff now. Like, it was a pretty big deal. And, um, you know, it wasn't, like, right where we were, but it was close enough that it scared me and i bailed basically um and and you know that's a, that's a reasonable thing. i was like oh maybe like if they're moving our direction which it turns out they didn't but maybe it honestly um if things ha- things were kind of falling apart too with like the weather and other things yeah that wasn't the only reason although that's what i told myself at the time sure i was like oh it's just safety yeah. but um we bailed but i did go back in 2020 and hiked it then with my my hiking partner flossy <laughs> and um it's it's a, I mean it's a beautiful trail, but it's hard. Like like I said, the weather is bad. The bugs can be bad if you go in the summer, and it, it can be kind of monotonous. There's really no mountains on it. Hmm. Like you think of the Adirondacks, you think of like the high peaks and like these super um, like crazy mountains, but it's it's a lowland trail. Like lots of ponds, lots of rivers and lakes and stuff, which is which is beautiful, but it's just a little mentally taxing. I think is the weather that you got typical for the climate that time of the year or did yeah. you just get a bad hand no it's it's pretty typical okay. and it's actually kind of funny the year this is i feel like anytime any anyone hikes a trail they're always like oh like my year the weather was like especially sure. so i'm gonna be that guy here but like that whole summer 2020 it was very dry and it was actually so dry that um when we first started the trail like our first couple nights we were being careful with our stoves and stuff which normally in the northeast you don't gotta worry about that mm-hmm. it's so wet you're not you're not worried about forest fires right i mean obviously you want to be careful but you know, it's not really something you're thinking about, but like we were actually being conscious of that at the start of the hike because it was just such a dry summer and like we even like the rivers were like super low in a bunch of spots, but then about halfway through it just dumped on us and it was cold and wet and we just had to keep going, dude. I'm sure you guys have both been there many times and many people listening <clears throat> have too. Yeah. And so it just <laughs> it wasn't a great experience, but yeah. The it only is a, the only through hike I've bailed on and we can talk about it. This is a through hike was the Lone Star Trail I in got, Texas. Yeah, oh man, got like 30 miles in. I was with uh, Java hiking biking and the forecast had like 36 hours of rain ahead of us. And the trail was very boring and monotonous. And like we had our booked our flight back, obviously. So we were competing with going to Austin and just doing all the fun things there. So it was a pretty easy decision. Interesting. Yeah. I haven't heard too much about that trail, to be honest. Don't do it. (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I actually saw through the Trek social media recently. Shout out James. He does a good work. Um, he was pumping a recent article that we did about the 10 through hikes that you can do in the winter and people were submitting their winter through hikes and uh somebody had sent a video of them on the lone star and the question was like how would you rank this he's like well the lone star trail i'd say i'd give it a lone star (laughs) (laughs) he's like but without question it is definitely the longest trail in texas (laughs) uh yeah but you know, I mean, if you want to stretch your legs and you're looking for something to do in the winter, you know, hey, I mean, it's, it's like picking up Texas. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, at least they have a trail, right? Like, that's kind of cool. You'd be yeah. surprised, like, some of the places, like Ohio, like the Buckeye Trail, dude. Right. Who thinks of <coughs> through hiking like over a thousand miles in Ohio? Yeah. And I'm not even saying I would do it or that I would recommend anybody do it, but I, uh, it's there and yeah. you got to respect it. If you're it. in Ohio and you can only like, ch- like chip away at weekends, you got to like, respect that's it. That's the best thing and that it's better than not doing that. I love shitting on trails I've never hiked. Sure. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Yeah. I'll tell you a text message from Wednesday. This is after we talked about the 10 winter hikes. <laughs> I sent Zach a text that just out of the blue said, in theory, I could do the Lone Star Trail. And Zach texts back, pick another trail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I might be giving it too much grief because our experience was uh, yeah. a bit tampered by you followed weather. it up with trust me <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i stay by it <laughs> i stay damn by it. dude yeah i mean yeah it's just picture a very monotonous it's what like 100 miles something like that yeah and it from the 35 miles that we saw mile one through 35 looked very similar there wasn't much to it but you know, again, 100 miles of repetitive trail is a lot better than sitting at home. So yeah. If those are your options, go do it. Yeah. But I do it in that, the winter, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think we did I this think? in February. Yeah. I don't know. It's good to have something you can do in the winter. Yeah. 
I mean, I run on the treadmill. Like, it's yeah. better than that. Like, anything you can do outside. My thing is, if you've got the opportunity. <laughs> so you, like, flew all the way there to, like, do the Lone Star Trail and stuff? <clears throat> uh, what was the inspiration? At that time, I think we, yeah, I was going out with Jabba, and we were meeting with the dudes from Gossamer Gear, and, yeah, the Lone Star Trail was a big part of the trip, and mm-hmm. we failed on it. So there's a little bit more to it than just, like, we were oh, going out specifically the for the Lone Star Trail. We ended up actually exploring some of the local state parks north of Austin, which is pretty cool. Just, you know, like a through hike. It's fun to have like little side adventures, things that yeah. aren't on the agenda and just have yeah. those stories. Up in, what do they call it? Hill country there? I don't know. Yeah, My I girlfriend's could, from, from Austin area, so I should know. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you the name of the park. Uh, and we didn't do a ton of hiking. It was like probably two miles back to the campsite. Oh, okay. It was just like, it was cool to see different parts of the state. You going to the bathroom? Yeah. Is that okay? Can, yes. can we pause and acknowledge this for a second? <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah, no. I, you, Did you want to go? You inhaled like you were going to ask a question, so I wasn't sure if I was going to jump no, in. I, I can just riff for a few minutes if you want to go too, no, Zach. No, no, no. no. Uh, yeah, you, you don't want that. You guys will be canceled in about five seconds. <laughs> uh, so we talked a lot about your YouTube. Tell me about Trail Tales, the podcast. Yeah, so when I was directing the AT in 2018, You know, I'd listened to some podcasts before that, but I would never really call myself a podcast guy. But then on the AT, I was just like, you know, desperate for stuff to listen to. So I found myself listening to a lot more podcasts than I ever had. And I always knew that I wanted to do content in some form even before that. And so I was going along and I just got this idea like fairly early on. I think I was in Virginia still when I got the idea. I was like, I want to start a podcast when I get back and, you know it would scratch that content itch and it would also be a good way to stay connected with people I met on the trail and just be a good outlet for talking about my through hike because most of my friends back home in in Burlington, Vermont at the time didn't give a shit and you know, I don't blame them for that. Mm -hmm. And so they would get pretty sick of hearing me talk about it. And so, you know, all these different ideas. And so I started telling the people I was hiking with, I was like, oh, like when I get back, like I'm going to start this podcast and getting a lot they were of just like, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, yeah. They were like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then lo and behold, I literally, I got home. I summited October 1st, 2018, summited in Katahdin, got home back to Burlington October 2nd and October 3rd, I like opened my laptop and started like officially like working on the podcast and did that for, like I said earlier, like over a year and, you know, got some traction you know, to the point where I was getting a couple reviews and people emailing me and stuff, but it wasn't like, you know, it, nothing compared to backpacker radio. I'll say that. Um, I pay attention to the charts. It still isn't for that matter. <laughs> you're doing pretty good. I'm not, I'm, doing, okay. I'm not trying to underplay it. You're doing very well. Uh, and it's not, an I'm, I'm going for that like distant second spot, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the niche. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, you're, there've been a couple of times where I've seen you've been above us with certain podcasts. Oh really? Typically, what are you looking at? Uh, Chartable is the resource oh I use. oh okay yeah I, I I look at Chartable too anyways we probably don't need to go down the yeah I don't we'll talk about that after about but this, yeah. um but no I did it for a while and you know found some success enough that I was still motivated to keep doing it and then eventually started the YouTube and then that kind of helped because people started to find out about it from my YouTube channel mm-hmm. and I mean it's just it's a podcast like yeah what do you see as the primary differences between making a good YouTube video and a podcast. A good oh, podcast. it's way different. I mean, a podcast, like you're interviewing, right? I guess I should specify for those that aren't familiar. It, it's an interview show for mm-hmm. the most part. Um, and I do have some reoccurring guests and stuff like that where it'll be more, I mean, I, you, you always try to make it conversational, right? But <clears throat> sometimes it's more interviewing. It just kind of depends. Um, sometimes it's just me kind of fucking around with my friends, people I know from trail and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I don't know it's always more going to be more focused on what they have to say versus what I have to say in my YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, and so that's a, that's a big difference. Obviously interviewing is tough, man. I give you guys, you guys are great at it. Obviously. Like I give you a lot of credit cause it's, it's not easy. Like I think a lot of people don't understand how difficult it can be. <laughs> I actually find it to be easy cause I hate really? talking about myself. So it's so much easier to be invested in what you're saying than me like riffing oh, on any particular subject. Like yeah, I just find That's this fair. Comes much more naturally to me. So. That's fair. I guess. And I'm sure having chance helps a little bit too, a little bit. Just since like, she's off air. Yes. Yeah. It's nice to have her. Yeah. Right. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't you make dare sure, say that. Yeah, I, <laughs> make sure she doesn't hear that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, 
I got a little sick of it for a while. Like I, I've never gotten sick of doing the episodes with like people I know personally. I did get a little bit of sick, get a little bit sick of um, interviewing just because I, I don't, I don't even know why, honestly, but um, that's, I, I've been like more into it lately. Hmm. I actually took a big break from the podcast from, this is a good sell for, for the podcast. Yeah. I didn't post for over a year, but um, hmm. from like late August, 2021, all the way until I guess it was about this time last year, I just kind of stopped and didn't, I was a dude out. Don't you guys ever do this, man? You won't. <laughs> I, I just stopped and I didn't even have a reason. I didn't announce it. I didn't tell anybody. And after like a month, I started to get like the emails and the comments mm. and the Instagram people messaging me and just being like, yo, what happened to the podcast? And mm. I felt bad, but I, t- I brought it back eventually. So I'm sorry, everybody. I should have at least, I like basically just ghosted my audience. <laughs> yeah. If we ever end this, can we do it that way? I would love just to just fade. Yeah. No, don't. No, 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 no fade. Don't do it. Just hard. Where'd they go? Yeah. No, no don't. That's so mean. Way. It's so mean. Like yeah. these people, they're just like so invested and I felt so bad. And it was never my intention to do that. It's not like I was like, all right, I'm ghosting my audience. It was just like a lot of like personal circumstances and stuff. And it's, it's, so that's why I, didn't make an announcement about it but yeah i felt bad yeah i i noticed i would say i would be curious to get your take chance that it has gotten easier since we have a regimented schedule the fact that we know that an episode's coming out every monday because there's a period of time where the what, episodes just come out whenever the fuck we would put them together that probably happened for the first three years or so damn yeah, yeah. um well, this applies to other areas of my life as well. Like I like to have a deadline because I am a chronic procrastinator. And if I can put something off, you bet I will. Um, so it's nice to know these go out on Monday because then there's the routine of it. And then even when it comes time for us scheduling guests, like we can see how far out our episodes are going and when we need to start fitting people in. Yeah. And I think if we didn't have any of that, before is like we would book a guest a week ahead and that would be as far as we looked and yeah. we've got guests like two months ahead and like a whole calendar if we had a gap we'd just call java yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people miss java we should get him back on do the they podcast. i mean time. yes they do they definitely no <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> people miss I miss java. you java yeah he he's been asked about a lot yeah no, someone well met. someone dm'd us and asked us if he was dead yeah, I've gotten a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. Is he dead? No, he He's... just did what you did and dropped off the face oh. of the earth. I was gonna say. Is, I that, feel a, like is I... that a good way to say it? I don't want to speak for him at all. I, he's doing fine. He, I don't. I don't. No one should worry about him. But I don't want to like put words into his mouth <laughs> as to why he's been quiet of late. Uh, yeah, his job was great. <clears throat> um, I gotta get him on my show too. He, yeah, he would be awesome. You don't even have to. You don't have to talk. You don't even have to be there. He would just monologue for a long time. <laughs> that's, that would, makes a good. That's a good podcast. I totally I, agree. Like, I don't know about you guys, but like my biggest fear is always I'll get someone on who just and, and like honestly you understand it. Maybe it's someone who's never done a podcast before. You're like you ask them a question and it's a pretty straightforward question, so they just give you a quick answer. And, yeah. You know, but then it's like you want you want them to yeah, yeah, yeah. ramble a little bit more and go on and on and on. So we that's why we like doing it in person because we feel like it's a little bit easier mm. to extract the conversation that way. Yeah. Alcohol can occasionally be beneficial that's for smart. that that's aspect. Uh, but yeah, no, it's because in other um, genres, verticals, I think there's more of a media library for people so you can get an idea of what you're going into. But in the hiking world, it's so niche that yeah. a lot of times you're just working with like some Instagram posts, like a couple blog posts or something like mm-hmm. that. So it's a little bit of a crapshoot. Um, for sure. But I think we like that. We do like that. Yeah. I have a note here. This is news to me that when Zach finished the long trail, he was in Berlin oh, yeah. and posted his location <laughs> on his IG story. Uh, give, me, give me the story there. Okay. So... So you said 2019. That's why I asked yeah. you earlier. Yeah. So you hiked the long trail in 2019. So I love the long trail. That's where I first started backpacking. I section hiked it once. That was like the first comp- hiking accomplishment I ever did. And then I went back and through hiked it a few years later as my first through hike, if you can call it that, because who knows what an actual through hike is. But through hike. Yeah, I, I could start. I'll, I'll fight for. I that think one. most people who have hiked the long trail yeah. definitely say yeah. it's a through hike. But an end to ender in their lingo. Oh yeah, that's right. They do the the Green Mountain Club does yeah. that thing. But anyways, you know, and I'm from, I'm from Vermont, born and raised. And so, if you couldn't tell. Um, and so, at that point, you know, it'd been a few years since we had talked because it'd been, been a few years since I, had, you know, stopped writing for the trek. And so, it's not like we were friends <laughs> or anything, but like we had some contact. And I saw that after your hike, I was living in 
downtown Burlington oh, no when shit. you were there yeah. after your hike. And I think you had posted on your story and you had like a location where you were, I think it was like a, some sort of shop or something mm-hmm. downtown. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, I know Like I'm literally like, that's so close to where I am. I was like, should I message him? <laughs> should I not? Would it be weird? Cause like we kind of know, but we don't really know each other. And this was, you know, before I had the big YouTube channel and not that, you know, that would have affected his, I was going to say, and he would have, <laughs> very, how many that's very have? shallow. I just power. wasn't as you know involved in this community, I guess you could say. And so I was like going back and forth, like probably pacing in my bedroom. Like do I message him? Do I, do I ask him if he wants to get a beer? Will he be like, I don't know this kid. Like, I don't want to get a beer with this weirdo. Or will he be like, yeah, like I got a night to kill in Burlington. Like, let's get a beer. But I didn't message you. But I thought about it. I was, yeah. I was close to it. Oh, you should have, man. You definitely should have. No, I I had booked my flight back uh, like mid-trail, and I finished a little bit faster than I was expecting. So I had extra downtime in Burlington, yeah. which was awesome. Burlington is fucking incredible. Yeah. Really cool scene. Like, it's a college town. The breweries are great. Great the breweries, yeah. yeah. The food's good. I was there in early October, so like perfect time of the year. Um, I'm very fond of your town, but yeah, I had nothing to do. I didn't know anybody there. Like the people that I are, the, uh, one of the people that I finished with, her parents came to pick her up and they just dropped me off at a hotel. And then I had three days to just like bum around Burlington. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> those, did I should have, yeah, he, he really should've. sounds like he didn't have anything going on. I had nothing going on. <laughs> I went and watched, uh, I thought you were like too big of a deal at that no. point. You know, you're Mr. Zach Davis yeah, from the track, dude. It's funny when people come into this podcast and they get like nervous before the podcast. Cause like I, we don't think you of mean ourselves. like he did. <laughs> I didn't, wasn't going to throw him under the bus. <laughs> I'm feeling good now. He's going to throw him under the bus. But uh, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm definitely not a big deal. Uh, but I remember I spent half the day. I walked to the movie theater on the south part of town to watch um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which was a <laughs> three hour flick. It's just like I had some quality me time. It did was you go on Church Street? Uh, I don't remember any of the street names, but well, that, that's like the the street with like all the shops. It's like close. Oh to, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. To, or sorry, to, to cars and stuff. I'm pretty sure I went to I'm every sure did, brewery yeah. in town while yeah. I was there. Yeah, no, I definitely. Damn, I should have hit you up, dude. I I get it more now, honestly. In fact, there was um, I was living in New Hampshire a little bit over the summer up in the White Mountains, and I had something shipped to me for like a sponsorship I was doing for a video, but there was like a mix up with UPS, and um, it didn't show up, and then I got a message one day. And it was this guy, his name's Patrick, and he he was a subscriber, like a fan of the podcast too, I think. And he saw my name on the package. It was this UPS facility was like right down the street from where I was living in, in a Twin Mountain, New Hampshire. And he recognized my name. And so he sent me a message on Instagram and he was just like, is this your package? <laughs> and I was just like, yeah. And then we ended up, you know, becoming friends and like hiking together a little bit and stuff. And, you know, he was just a, I guess you could just say like a, a fan or whatever. But, um, you know, that didn't stop me from, like, wanting to be friends with him. And so it's kind of similar to, like, how I felt back then, I guess. I don't know with you. I was like, I don't I don't want to be, like, weird. But now I understand that it's, like, not weird. It's just, you know, yeah. you're just Zach. And some of the most successful people that I've met in this world are the most humble. Like, Heather Anderson is the sweetest person you'd ever meet and, like, one of the most accomplished people in this sport. It's like, I haven't met really anyone with a giant ego that's unapproachable. There's yeah. probably, there might be a couple of exceptions. Think. There. Let's get them out there. I'm telling <laughs> you. I'm trying to, I'm Exposed. Trying to, <laughs> um, I'm trying to ruin your podcast. Though I will give, if someone's listening, I will give a couple of tips unsolicitedly. Um, just because, like, I've also had some of my best times on trail be from people reaching out, right? And you say yes, and it ends up being great. Um, so b- one of the things on my most recent hike for the Ozark Highlands Trail that bummed me out is I stagger all my shit. Like, it's not, I'm not posting I'm in Burlington when I'm in Burlington you because have to, of that though. little back of your mind fear of like, what yeah, if the murderer exactly. is watching, you know? No, it's smart. It's um, smart. But what I hated was once I was p- posting the videos oh. and catching up, did you just cut me off? No, oh, the, I was sitting on it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm still going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They can happen. hear you. We can't hear you. I thought you were just like, fucking <laughs> You're back. You're um, back. <laughs> no, when I was posting my videos, as I was getting to places, I was getting some DMs from people that were like, hey, if you're here, like, would love to, you know, whatever, link up in some capacity, and I'm already back home, you know? And it's like, fuck, that would have been so fun yeah. had I been there. And some of the best things, like when I stayed with Nancy in the Smokies, she had reached out, like, in advance of even my stagger, so I had time to think about it. And the guy that drove me to the AT, he had reached out, and he was like, hey, I blogged for the track, like, 
you know like something where it's like if like you knew zach but i didn't know this dude and but he had said how we would have that connection mm-hmm. and i had time to be like zach is this guy like chill or a murderer you know <laughs> and it ended up being like the best trail magic ever because yeah. we had to push back our start date because of bad weather he had a buddy who had a cabin in the mountains in georgia that just let us stay there oh while nice we out the that like, sounds so the fun. nicest freaking stuff in the world and it's just because like he was willing to message you yeah. know um so i i second zach i encourage anyone to just reach out and shoot your shot and yeah. we're not like i am a freaking loser that was as zach is um but like keep in mind that some people will stagger stuff so your best odds are like yeah. if you see he's doing the long trail and you want to hang out with him in burlington message him beforehand and yeah. be like hey when you're here just like blanket advice and like be nice about it and don't don't be offended if they don't do it either because you also got to understand like you know you might know them from the videos and stuff but they don't know you mm-hmm. and so you can't take it personally if they're not interested but they very they they might be i've had i had people a couple times on the pct who reached out like well in advance and um i you know would take them up on rides or traumatic or whatever so it's definitely worth a shot especially especially for like through hiking like if someone's mm-hmm. literally like through hiking like a long trail yeah because they're going to be way more enticed if you're offering yeah, them sure. you yeah. know, <laughs> a shower and food and stuff. And you're right. It is going to depend on mindset. Like if I'm having a bummer week, you mm-hmm. know, I'm probably going to want to keep to myself. But like you're saying, especially with through hiking, part of the experience is the culture on and around the trail. And if you are sharing that, like that's part of the journey, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. So that's something that's always really cool. Yeah, definitely. Do you get people recognizing you a lot now? um on trail yeah off trail almost never hmm. it's insane like yeah. i've got like almost I, I should double check this but i think almost like 70 million views on my channel at this point and like one time ever have i ever been recognized off trail but huh. on trail like uh this past end of summer i went back to the pc to try to finish what i missed the year before and uh i didn't because of more fires in the same spots but i got recognized a pretty good amount on trail mm-hmm. like pretty much i was out there for about two weeks and yeah. probably at least one a day there and everyone's been so nice. Like I've never, it's, it's not quite as much. I know. Like, I, I think I listened to your episode with Darwin and he talked about it a little bit or one of the episodes with Darwin. Mm-hmm. And I think for, it, it sounded like maybe it affected him a little bit more. Like sometimes he wasn't super down with it is what I took away from. It. I don't think he ever explicitly said that. Sorry, Darwin. If you're, if I misrepresent no, I, I, that, you're but, not, you're not misrepresent. He, okay. He, I got that right, right. He thought it interfered with his hike that yeah. he was like being idolized. He didn't like that yeah. element. Of so it. basically my point is, I'm no Darwin. It never got to that point for me. Like no one's like, Oh my God, like it's Kyle. Like, yeah. you know, it's usually just people like, Oh dude, like sick videos or whatever. So what I'm learning is it's helpful if, if you want that to have a giant beard. Mm. Cause <laughs> Jabba has that Jabba gets, I've seen him get recognized at the airport at red rocks wow, on really? day hikes. Like he gets recognized everywhere. I guess to be fair, I've also been living in Honolulu, Hawaii. So sure. it's not exactly a hiking, yeah, you yeah. know, Mecca. Like if I was walking around downtown Denver, it might happen a little more often, but yeah it's not it's and i've never the only bad experience i've ever had from getting recognized was my fault not the person who recognized me because i was were you weird uh, i was i was weird yeah it It was on my pct hike so i don't even remember his name i feel bad so anyways this this guy was on mirror Mirror pass in the sierras and um i got up to the top there's a decent amount of other people up there jmt hikers pct hikers and um i noticed there's this one guy and he was he was a little bit away from me and I just noticed he was kind of like looking at me a little extra, but it wasn't like a creepy. It wasn't like a stare. Like I wasn't like getting weird vibes from it at all. Um, I just like no- took notice of it and I thought like, Oh, maybe like he recognizes me or whatever. Like it happens sometimes, but like, it wasn't like a bad, I didn't get a bad vibe. And um, some other hikers come up, I start talking to them and then I think he knew them. And so he came over and then he started talking with them and then he was like, Oh, like, by the way, like, you know, like, I know like your college is hiking. Like I watch your videos or whatever. And then I was like, what did I say to him? Dude? I was like, Oh yeah, I saw you like staring at me or <laughs> something really <laughs> douchey like that. And like, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know why I said it, dude. I wasn't like trying to be a dick to him. It yeah. just, I'm just awkward. Yeah, and I just I came say, out wrong. That's something people should realize about the hikers in general is we tend to be an awkward bunch. So yeah. We'll it was just, but it was super silly. And then like, and he got like embarrassed and he kind of like, you know, walked away a little bit. And then afterwards I was like, I was talking to my friend Flossie who I was hiking with. And I was like, should I go like apologize? Like that wasn't good. And he was like, yeah, probably. <laughs> and so I actually, we were above tree line. And so I could actually see him 
And so I like hustled down and I, I caught up to him and I <laughs> Chased apologized. Him down. Tail yeah. your legs. And he was, he was understanding. Like, he wasn't mad or yeah. anything, which I'm very grateful for. But yeah, that was, that was my biggest douche moment. Like YouTube douche moment for sure. I, I still feel bad about it. Yeah. yeah I'm sh- your intentions were honest there. Yeah, but I should have known better, right? Like, what is what is that? Like, <laughs> and sometimes you get tunnel vision, you know, when you're in the moment. Guess, like, everything yeah. goes black, and then you just, like, you come back to after the encounter's done, and you're like, oh. Yeah, I, had, I, maybe I, was just, I think I was kind of just excited, honestly, because I get yeah. excited when people recognize me, because, like, you know, I put a lot of work into this. It doesn't happen that much, so, you know, it's always nice. And so maybe that, and I just verbalized that, and it just came out wrong, and... So sorry to that guy. I don't remember his name. I remember he was from Canada, though. <laughs> I never saw him again either. So, you mentioned that there's not much of a hiker scene in Honolulu. That makes sense. Uh, I'm curious about Burlington. Is there any sort of hiker trash? Culture yeah. Out well, there? when I, when I say hiker scene, I guess I mean more just like through hiker, or like this yeah. kind of scene. Yeah. There's lots of people in Honolulu that love Th- to hike. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. About specifically, yeah. Um, the hiking there's crazy. By the way, it's like it's like honestly a big reason you asked me earlier. Like a big reason why I haven't done a ton of it is it's kind of fucking dangerous like mm. it's like cliffs and mud people wear micro spikes for the mud there hmm. like the first time i hiked on oahu i saw a guy wearing micro spikes i was like i never knew that people would wear micro spikes for anything other than ice like yeah. it, it blew my mind i heard there's a lot where you have to at least the articles i've seen about hiking in hawaii is like there's a lot that you can't technically hike anymore because it's technically closed. And yeah. so you have to wake up at a certain time to sneak past this <laughs> Some like, spots, yeah. Like the stairway that, to yeah. heaven is That's a, a big lot one. of the stuff I've seen. Yeah, and which I – you can hike it from the – anyways, there is some stuff like that. There's, there's lots of legal stuff too, but it's like also – a lot of it's like – and again, I'm not, I'm not a Hawaii hiking expert to be completely clear here. But, um, you know, from what I've seen, a lot of it is just like – unmaintained trail there are some that like the state will maintain but it's not like super maintained and so it can just be gnarly and a lot of times those trails will have ropes so you'll be like pulling yourself up with a rope and it's like i don't really know much about climbing like the class whatever but it's like it's a little much for me i'm I'm not even afraid of heights but like it's just it's kind of dangerous especially by myself too and so I haven't done a ton, but anyway, sorry, that was not even your question. What, yeah. what was your original question there? Uh, I'm curious to know, like, are there hiker meetups happening in Burlington? Um, I'm sure there's some, like, it's probably the city that most people that are doing the long trail are flying into. It is far enough away from the AT. It's not far from the AT, but it's far enough that like the AT culture doesn't really extend up there as much, unfortunately. Um, but I'm sure there's I'm sure there's stuff like there's lots of people like everyone there knows about the long trail and mm-hmm. Burlington in general and just Vermont in general for that matter is like very outdoorsy like skiing is probably the number one thing but just like all sorts of outdoor stuff like mountain biking is huge there as well not to mention all the hikes and stuff so maybe not so much uh, I mean I'm sure there's lots of through hikers there but probably not the same thing as here where you guys are doing like meetups and stuff. But um, outdoor outdoorsy stuff in general is definitely like huge there. I mean, tourism, outdoor tourism is probably the biggest thing in Vermont's entire economy. So yeah. skiing in particular. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, bringing it back to the big early conversation, is there a long trail mystery story that you feel especially passionate about? I know we talked about that hiker from 2011. Is there another one that you think doesn't get enough attention in the mass media? So there was one story the most viewed video on my channel um, about a CDT hiker. His trail name was Otter. This story has gotten a lot of attention now because it fucking blew up on my channel. But before that, you know, I'd never heard of it. And it's a crazy story. I'm probably going to butcher parts of it here. So I recommend that people either, there's some good articles on it online or, or go watch the video. But um, I'm going to cut you off here and just put in a little, because <clears throat> you've said this for all the ones that you're talking about. It's really hard, just for the listener, it's really hard to recall right like you could do all the research in the world for something to be able to recall it perfectly is really hard yeah yeah i just i don't i i don't want to do like the victims like you know a disservice or disrespect that's why i get i just want to say that to echo you because you're doing a good job there but for everyone to know for to recall this kind of information is yeah i just like i just don't want to get something wrong and then you know because i don't know it's like a lot of these stories i cover they're quite sad and i do my absolute best to like be good to the people involved with the stories and like respect them. And just my biggest fear is like, I 
inadvertently clearly like do something wrong and then people are like you fucking assholes anyways um so this the story of otter extremely experienced hiker um i know that he had triple crown for sure and i believe that he had done all three trails at least two times maybe even more and he was on his, his like third cdt so but anyways just probably one of the most experienced through hikers out there like that's not even an exaggeration and um he was going southbound on the cdt and very late season uh older gentleman this is where i think he was in his 50s i want to say um you know slightly older gentleman and um he cumbrus pass in colorado cumbrus cumbrus pass uh hiking south leaves from there in november and he hikes about a day in and then a storm. He actually hikes into New Mexico at this point and um, a storm hits and I, I, we don't even know for sure, but something overcame him where he didn't have the strength to hike out and he tried to, he just couldn't do it. A ton of snow fell, which is really difficult for him. So he ends up backtracking and he stayed in this campsite for a long ass time. I want to say like close to two weeks um, just waiting for someone to rescue him. Didn't have a, uh, a Garmin or any sort of uh, satellite messenger. Didn't have cell service. Uh, he even took some videos. It's kind of being like, I'm, yeah. I think like, I know the story you're talking about. Yeah. I think outside did an article. On yeah. This. Outside did. Yeah. yeah. And, um, super sad videos. And like, he was kind of like, I'm like going to be screwed if no one finds me. And he didn't really give any, he didn't really leave any solid plans with anybody. And again, I'm not trying to criticize him with this stuff, but this, these are all important things to know about the story sure. because those are some of the biggest lessons from it. And so he's stuck in this campsite for a while. He knows from previous experience that he can follow a forest service road down to a forest service campground where there's a pit toilet. And um, he ends up doing that, go, thinking the, the, the toilet will give him some more shelter. When he gets down there, there's some like horse feed left over. So he's like eating the horse feed. At this point, it's been weeks. And... Um, He's, you know, just bunkering down in the shelter. But and there, and at this point, he's been reported missing finally, although it did take a long time. And um, they're looking for him. There were some false sightings, like, further south in New Mexico that kind of threw off the search. They were looking down there, but it wasn't actually him. And uh, eventually he just realized, like, he was going to die. And so he's stuck in this bathroom. And um, before he died, shortly before he died, he actually carved into the door on the bathroom, like, he like put his name and put like dead inside and um and he eventually he just died in the bathroom and it wasn't until the next spring that the first northbound cdt hiker came through and he was aware of the what of of the man that was missing um steven olshansky i believe was his 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 full name otter was his trail name and this this northbound hiker was aware of what had happened because he'd been seeing the flyers the missing posters and stuff and so when he saw the name carved in the door he was like oh shit and so he alerted authorities and sure enough and um otter left a journal basically that kind of detailed his ordeal and it was i don't remember exactly how long but it was over a month i believe that he was stranded and it was just an insane story and, I, and when i heard it for the first time someone had actually commented on a video i mean like you should you should look into this story to potentially cover on your channel and i was like i even sent it to some friends i remember when I first heard, I was like, I cannot believe I've hiked the AT, most of the PCT, and all this other stuff. I'm so involved with this community, and I've never heard this story before mm -hmm. because it's crazy, first of all, and there's just a lot of takeaways in terms of if he should have hiked out that day because he was, my understanding anyways, he was aware of the potential for the weather to come in. Obviously, an experienced hiker, he knows that, um, I believe it was November Maybe it was late October, but late season for mm -hmm. hiking through Colorado and the mountains in New Mexico. And so he would have known that. He had even made some gear changes to compensate for the colder weather and stuff. And, um, you know, things to learn about, like, should you be carrying a, a spot device? That was the, the final straw for me after hearing that story is when I finally sure. bought one. I should have a long time ago, but um, that was the final the final straw there after that story. Yeah. I, um, I went and bought one and just a lot of takeaways. It's just a crazy story. And that video absolutely blew up on my channel. And it's like, I don't know. I just hope that people that are going to be through hiking in the future, on one hand, I'm like, I don't want to scare anybody, obviously. 
but like that story and a lot of the other ones I've covered, I do think they're good to know. And honestly, like I just said there, it made me go by the spot. Um, and there's been other things too that I've changed or learned from covering these stories on my channel to like hopefully keep myself more safe and be more cautious. So yeah. I don't know. It's a fine line because I don't want to scare people away from through hiking, but also it's sure. good to know these things, you know? Yeah. I remember coming across that story and being blown away because uh, it's rare that you see these stories from people who are such experienced hikers. Yeah, yeah. This guy had a ton of experience. Oh, yeah. And I think that was part of what made him so brazen is like he's done it's so like, many things. It's at a certain point, does the level of experience just like actually put you at, in, in, sure. in more danger because you're more confident? Right. Obviously, if you're super inexperienced, there's a lot of risk there. But right. At what point does the level of experience actually yeah you know make it more dangerous right we've had a number of interviews of late where we talk to people who like they get off on having hikes where they're finding their boundary in terms of like their comfort levels and Ugh. i'm just i'm too risk averse like it's fun to talk to people who feel that way but that's not me <laughs> no yeah. me either man i mean there's lots of ways that you can push yourself that aren't putting your yourself at risk right yeah when it comes to through hiking but yeah in terms of like there's this trail in Oahu actually, I don't remember the name of the actual trail, but the abbreviation is the KST. And it's basically just a through hike across Oahu and only a handful of people have done it because it's like just cliffs and like you have to bring your own ropes at some mm -hmm. point and in a lot of spots. And it's just like super gnarly, like climbing, like just insane. And like, that's one of those things when I hear about the few people who have done that trail, I'm like, dude, that is just, I mean, obviously they're pretty comfortable with it, but like that's way outside of my comfort yeah. zone. Yeah. I'm in that same camp. Uh, I have another note here. Where is this one? <clears throat> uh, this is a quote. I was living in a fraternity. This is when oh, we yeah. used to do the uh, writer's calls. <laughs> I know exactly where I, you're going. I was living in a fraternity <laughs> and uh, was definitely drunk for almost all of those. <laughs> I wonder if Zach remembers. I uh, definitely didn't know that you were drunk. Wow. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care at all. I mean, yeah. you drink at the podcast. <laughs> so basically what was Zach's referring to there for everyone listening is um, back when I used to write for Appalachian Trials and the Trek, it was about once a month, if I recall, we'd do these – yeah. optional like zoom calls basically with all the writers where we just like bounce ideas and just kind of hang out mm -hmm. like, super casual thing. And like I said, when I was writing uh, for you, I was, you know, 19 years old. And at the time I was literally living in a fraternity house. <laughs> and if I seem to recall that most of the time these meetings were on like Fridays, like Friday nights or like Saturday nights. Yeah. Or I, something like that. They I, were optional. I, it, was, it wasn't like, you know, yeah. it wasn't a big deal, but like. What does it say about Zach that that's when he scheduled them? I don't, I mean, I don't know. Everyone's free then. It makes sense. So like, this was eight free. years ago, so I would have been mid-20s. Yeah. I, I mean, this is certainly possible. I don't, I honestly don't remember. But eight years ago. Yeah. That's crazy. But um, You said you're 27, right? I'm 27, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, dude, that's nuts. But yeah. anyway, so at the time I was in a fraternity, I was living in the fraternity house. And so Friday, Saturday nights, <laughs> you know, <laughs> pretty much every single one of those meetings like i was i was pretty drunk <laughs> and i remember there was a couple times where one time in particular we were like the next morning I, I never like blacked out or anything but like i woke up and i was like fuck dude and i was like by far the youngest one on all these calls and like That's funny. I, I just felt like really bad i was like god i, I hope these people don't hate me <laughs> i hope they don't know i'm like hammered right now yeah i remember at that time that like the first icebreaker question used to be like what are you drinking because mm -hmm. i'd always have like a beer in hand they're different now yeah okay so that's th to be clear it's not like it, this was some professional thing and i was yeah. like showing up like yo what the fuck like, yeah, you know yeah. but um yeah it was <laughs> that's good, funny. good times that's funny <laughs> yeah now i'm drinking like an herbal tea during them <laughs> how far i've fallen <laughs> no, no. <laughs> are you washed up I'm washed up for sure. <laughs> yeah. Chance and I have been having conversations about being husbands. Don't let me in. Yeah, no, I did. I actually brought that up. I was like, people can't think we're husbands. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, sweet. Well, what's next for you? Um, For now, I mean, I'm just keeping on with all the content. Um, I'd like to hike the CDT at some point. Although I need to finish the PCT first. Uh, hopefully next year. What are you missing on the PCT? I'm missing from Syed Valley to Ashland. Okay. And I still haven't finished California. That's great. I uh, still haven't finished Oregon either, for that matter, because I haven't hiked to Ashland. And um, I'm missing from Stevens Pass to the Canadian border. Okay. I didn't That's get a good stretch. I, I didn't get to finish at the Canadian border. Yeah. It sucked. You were at like the makeshift terminus. I did. I bailed even before that. At uh -huh. that point, I was like, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a long story, but um, so I'd like to finish the PCT. Hopefully, going to do that. Um, 
this upcoming year. That's what I said last year too. And I, and I did go and same spots were on fire when I was there. I'm going to try to go a little earlier this year. I think I learned that lesson by now. Um, and I like to do the CDT at some point, but no like solid plans for that. And then lots of, I like the, the shorter trails, like the long trail and the washed out trail. And so I'm eyeing up a lot of those. And so any specifics you can give us? Um, I don't have any specific plans for anything other than the PCT at the moment, but um, I know the uh, superior hiking trail in Minnesota is on my list. That's mm -hmm. high on my list. Um, the centennial trail in South Dakota really interests me for mm -hmm. some reason. And pretty much every small trail is on my list, but those two are probably the two highest right now. Not even for any specific reasons. I just, I like them. I like the sound of them, I should say. And so those maybe, but I don't know. The PCT is like the main thing right now. Yeah. It's finally finishing that, hopefully. Yeah. Stevens Pass to the border is an awesome stretch. So yeah. you've got something to look forward to. Yeah, I'm sure. excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I was excited last year, but I don't know. It's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the YouTube channel is Kyle Hates Hiking. The podcast is Trail Tales. What else should people go find you at? I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm on Instagram, too, at Kyle Hates Hiking and TikTok. Uh, I feel terrible <laughs> saying that, but I am there. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, only – no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, that's it. You nailed it. Cool. This has been a ton of fun, honestly. Uh, a long time coming. I'm glad yeah, you were able to Yeah, it's so to nice to it. finally meet you, Zach. Yeah. Like what about me? Come I, on. You got to understand the you history here. You're kidding me. I've been on your podcast. It's not that I'm not great, grateful to meet you. Yeah, it's okay. Like, it's just not as like good. Like I said, at the very first thing no, I said. No, it's fine. <laughs> Take Kyle hates Chance. That's Kyle the, hates Chance. I'm going to change Check the channel out. name to that. This has been everything. I appreciate you guys so much for having me on here and for everything. And If Chance wants me to come back on, I'd love to come back on in the future. I'll think about it. Yeah. More importantly, if the listeners want me to, we'll see. We'll see how, see how I did. This has been a ton of fun, Kyle. Thank you so much. And this has been great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. To the Trek propaganda portion of today's show, the article that I want to feature is one we do a series of these each year. Uh, they're updated of old articles. We do a survey of our writers and all their best advice. This particular piece is the best through hiking tents of 2024. Uh, the series has grown to be much more popular than we were anticipating. So with great power comes great responsibility. But uh, Owen and I have especially collaborated very hard on this. And we've officially divvied out our awards for the best through hiking shelters. I guess I should be specific tents. Um, I'm curious about how much I want to give away here. I want you guys to go read the article because it's very in-depth. It's long. I want to say it's like 5,000 words. Uh, there's a lot of thought that goes into this. But the, the thing that I'll tip is the best all-around tent this year, which I don't even think has been an award in years past. So we tweak the awards each year uh, just based on our moods. The best all-around tent goes to the Z-Packs Duplex. I feel like that's a very deserving honor, considering that I think that's been the top model on both the AT and the PCT for the last couple of years at least. People love DCF. They make a great tent. And, um, yeah, I don't know what else there is to say. Do you use a duplex? Uh, Plex Solo. Okay. Mm. I, I, do, I do have a du duplex too, though, yeah. I used the older, I don't even think they sell this anymore, is the Solo Plex or the Soul Plex, I want to say. Yeah, like the, the older version of the Plex yeah. Solo. Right? Yeah, I used that in the PCT. Great tent. Yeah, I liked it. They, they sent me one like halfway through my PCT hike, and I dig it for sure. Yeah. I, I'm still using it now. Yeah. They do good stuff in all categories, but I think probably <coughs> shelters is where they shine the most. So yeah. if you guys are curious on tents, this covers all budgets, all hiking styles, all climates and conditions. Uh, this is a really well thought out article. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for a tent, this is a good piece. Okay, let's go to today's question of the day. I'm assuming this is a Rachel original. No, this is, is one it? I saw on the internet. Okay, this is an internet original yes. via Chance. This is a Chance rips off the internet. Sure, uh, I'll let you introduce it then. Okay, um, well that's hard because I had a follow-up question in terms of how we're using this question, but okay. I'll ask that after. Okay. Question of the day is, you've been given an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with the elephant? Now my follow-up question is, is this like a friendly elephant or is this like the elephants you see in those videos where they're like storming a town mm. kind of elephants? Like, are we, are we able to like yeah. engage with this elephant or is this an angry elephant? Somebody fact check me on this. My understanding is that uh, African elephants are tend to be 
more gentle creatures compared to the Asian elephants. I think they can be oh, a little bit. Oh, I thought bit. that was backwards. I could be wrong. Okay. This is based on very little experience other than the <laughs> fact that I've been to Africa. Oh, see, I've been to Asia. Okay. So everyone's <laughs> pumping their own elephants. Yeah. It's the nicest. Uh, but we went to an elephant sanctuary, and that's what they told us. I did get slapped off my feet by the trunk of an Asian elephant once. So maybe that checks out. Okay. That was fun. Yeah. I'll go first quickly because this is not something I'm uh, an expert on by any regards. But I will say elephants are incredible creatures. Like they're very smart. What when one of their I forget what their pack is called. Do you know? Herd. Herd. When one of their herd dies, they mourn. Like they're really wow. emotional, sweet creatures, and that just makes you love elephants so much. I would get a like giant farmland space and just love the elephant like I, I don't know if i would do anything with it in particular other than just like try to give it a good life because yeah they're truly incredible creatures and uh it's a lame answer but it's my honest answer it's very wholesome um i would try and this is completely not like realistic or rational as is the question i would do a through ride an elephant through ride um I think that could be very fun. I think we could cover lots of miles. Um, I've ridden an elephant before, like sitting on its neck, like the bare neck where you're just like there mm -hmm. and your your butt moves with its shoulders when it moves. It's kind of scary. Um, but I love elephants. I, just like you, my Nana loved elephants. She had like elephants all over her house. So I've always loved elephants. And Not actual elephants. No, if she had elephants all, <laughs> if she had real elephants all over her house, yeah. that'd be so sick. Yeah, just have to um, no, but like I have to say something here because my wife would be very mad at me if I didn't. Uh, she was very particular with the sanctuary that we went to. They wouldn't allow people to ride because apparently the sanctuaries where that's the case, the elephants have been like abused to tr yes. to be trained to that level. I'll so just, caveat, I'm saying that for the listeners, not to lecture. I learned you. this after. This was when I was in college. Yeah. I learned this after the fact. I didn't go to the tiger sanctuaries in Thailand, but there were some times where you'd be riding a moped and you would just see like these people with elephants and you'd be like, do you, do you guys let us ride them? And they'd say yes. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I did learn that after. And I actually, ha I've, I've seen African elephants because I've been to a sanctuary in Kenya um, where they had the baby ones, but they're so cute. They're adorable. And I think like if you can take a horse on the PCT, neglecting, like we're, we're not talking the realm of the real, take out the destruction it would probably cause to the trail <laughs> terrain environment oh, so the pcta might have a yeah, issue, yeah you know or like any other trail where that would maybe be not feasible um through riding a long trail on an elephant would be so cool yeah to that point they eat an insane amount of they're just eating all day yeah. long they would i think they eat like but hundreds of pounds of vegetation noses. yeah oh yeah no, they're incredible creatures. Yeah, do normal people right. know this much about elephants? You guys are going <laughs> off right now. I, I don't know. My wife is elephants. like the ultimate animal lover, so everything I know is secondhand knowledge through her. But yeah, <laughs> fair I, enough. Yeah, <laughs> they're on the they're on the top three of favorite animals. We should do a triple crown. If never mind. <laughs> of what? Favorite animals. Okay, I'm Otters. sure we've done that. Probably. Yeah. So so who's giving me the elephant again? It doesn't matter. Just you are given one. Yeah. When, when life gives you elephants, when life gives you elephants. Um, my in my first instinct was to take it on trail. I'm not gonna lie, but in the interest of not copying chance, you got to it first. Fair enough. Um, I'm gonna go polar opposite of Zach, dude. I'm selling that. There's got to be a market no, for no, elephants, no, no, right? No, no, It says you can't give it away oh, or sell, sell it? it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, um, he's in a bad rule. position. There's not. We took the two best options: uh -huh. love it or ride it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> what well, else are you doing? This is where it? the best creativity comes from, but, <laughs> dude. I don't know, man. Um, I just went to. I just actually just saw an elephant for the first time in my life. I went to the the zoo in Honolulu a couple weeks ago. I don't know, dude. I wouldn't actually sell it to be clear. Like, <laughs> I don't know. They were they were pretty cool. What else is there to do it besides like yeah, sell know. it? You could do like you could start a construction company where the elephant levels out like the building area before they put a home on it. You know what? I would start a YouTube channel with it. <laughs> that's a good. That's I'm very Kyle loves either. elephants. <laughs> Kyle loves elephants. A spinoff. <laughs> yeah, I would start a YouTube channel with it. There you go. And probably be shut down from <laughs> by the government immediately but you yeah. started this youtube channel all is thriving you're about to upload a video what is the title of this video mm. um kyle rides an elephant on the pct dude 
<laughs> that's that's a little bit different because I'm not saying like the whole PCT, but I could take it on like a section. Yeah. You know? What's the thumbnail? Is my question. Yeah. Oh, dude. I mean, I would definitely try to get the elephant to do like one of the you know <laughs> one of the faces. Red arrow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or, I, I, red arrow pointed to me on the elephant. I'm like doing this, and it's like screwed in like giant red letters. Ooh. Yeah. That's that's the formula basically for any thumbnail is just screwed and a red arrow. Yeah. I saw a video of like a baby elephant shaking its trunk to and fro and uh, the caption was from someone like if girls had a penis for a day, <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> celebrating the fact that they had this thing. <laughs> um, OK, wait, this needs to be noted. Rachel, please note this somewhere. The next girls stuff episode we do. I want triple crown of things you would do if you had a penis for a day because I have so many answers. Yeah, <laughs> I've thought about this. That's a good note, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a job you've got, Rachel. <laughs> okay. This is the triple crown of social. This is for you, Kyle. We did this in honor of you being here. Thank you. Triple crown of social media will round up to include YouTube in this hiking stereotypes. So this is not necessarily uh, a stereotype in terms of like a, a sort of person, but um, posts that people do that are somewhat stereotypical. And doesn't Two hikers. Yeah, f specifically in the hiker trash realm. I'll start. Um, this one works better for men than women due to the beard growth, but. I knew you were taking this. I know. Well, I just saw you get excited. <laughs> When someone takes a photo of their face every day on the trail and then makes like a three minute video at the end, that's like my face on the PCT. That's and epic, just honestly. Like, yeah. The beard gets really long. Yeah. I am always envious of those. Yeah. I, I want to do one that's like my leg hair on the PCT. Or pubes you could do. Oh, yeah. That'll get banned. Yeah. Well. <laughs> For personal use, you could put it on the wall here, and it would go. It would drive oh, up yeah. auction value. Imagine my like a video of my pubes changing over the course of a trail is just <laughs> yeah. on our wall. I think that's more of an OnlyFans type of feature. <laughs> yeah, but that's social media. That's our next platform. Yeah. We'll yeah. get there. Yeah. All right, Kyle, you get two. I get two. Okay. Um, wait, no, you no. haven't gone yet. Okay, Kyle gets one. I get two. Yes. Yeah, okay. There we go. Um, my first time. First right. one. This is a YouTube one. The the classic shot where you set up the camera and then you walk away from it. But everyone who watches knows you have to come back and get the camera. But you, and you don't include that part of the video, obviously. Sure. That, I, that, that's the one for me. I've done that a couple of times. I always feel like such a bozo. Yeah. You, like in you the do. moment, I'm like in my head, the, the self hate that's happening is like, you're a fucking It's loser. just total acting. Like, you're <laughs> just like yeah, I'm totally not going to come back and pick up my thousand yeah. dollar camera or whatever. Like how many times did you do that in the PCT? I've never done that. I okay. swear to God. I've done ones where I, um, in, 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 I'm very proud of this. Clearly. Um, I've done ones where I'll get to like an overlook or something. And I'll like set up the camera and then film myself kind of walking over to the overlook. So let's be honest, it's not that different, right? But I've never done one where I've faked hiking along, right? And been like, oh, wow, look at that, you know? Yeah. I've never done that, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I get it. It makes the videos better. Yeah. I'd probably have better videos if I did it, but I haven't. What camera do you use? We should ask that. Um, I've been using a Canon EOS R for the past couple of years. I actually just bought an R6 Mark II, though. I haven't even gotten it yet. It's about my parents' house. <laughs> mm. I'll be getting it soon. Is that a mirrorless? Yeah. Yeah, full frame mirrorless. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I get two. So many options. I'm going to go with one. This is the first one that came to mind for me. Is the aerial gear shot. This is typically before oh, you leave for a, a hike. One. Yeah, it's the overview shot. I've been seeing more people doing this with themselves in the photo. I've always done it. I do this myself. I should also specify <laughs> that these stereotypes I don't think are necessarily bad per se. They're just ideas that are borrowed on a regular mm -hmm. basis. But yeah, the aerial gear shot, your gear strategically laid out in a very aesthetically pleasing way. It's a good way for people who are following along to actually see how little you're carrying. I always wonder how other people take these photos. I did one for, I think it was the AT that I did it for. Um, and my method was I made ball flap stand on a chair above me and like lean over so that you couldn't mm. see him. Yeah. And like, we're not dating or anything. Like he has no skin in the game. And I've, I made him do it like 18 times. So I was like, <laughs> this part's fucked up. That part's fucked up. Do it again, do it again. Cause I've got like crazy yeah. parts of my brain that you're, you're very particular are particular. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's how we did it for mine was I forced someone to hover over me with a camera. Mm. I'm curious how other people do it really tall tripod i have no idea honestly 
I did one, but I wasn't in it, so I just stood over. Yeah, it. that's how always how I've done it. And you have to get in like a weird yoga position to make it look nice, but yeah, it takes a few few yeah. attempts, and then you like you rearrange things. You put more thought into it than it's probably deserving. Um, I don't see this one nearly as much. Do I, is, do I want to do this one? Because I don't think anyone's taking this one. I'm going to do it anyways. This I think this was more common back in my day. Uh, I'll be curious to get your guys' take to see if this is something that's still happening. But I've seen this especially a lot on the AT. But when someone hits the 500-mile mark, they you either post the uh, I would walk 500, mm. <laughs> that lyric, or now I know you can include songs on Instagram as well. But I feel like that is a very uh, cliche post that I've seen a lot. When when we did the PCT, uh, my hiking partner Flossie did um, making my way downtown when we hit a thousand miles. Yeah, yeah. And you guys reposted it. Oh, really? And it was sick. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you did too because he deleted his Instagram later, and so now I can look no, back on it. On it lives page. on in infamy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good one though. Okay, you're up again. Um, okay, so this one actually Jessica came up with to give proper credit, but um. It's a good one. It's it's the pinky holding the pack, the ultralight pack, at some point along your hike to show off, you know, because you can't just hold it normally. You can't wear it on your back. You got to, you know, if your pinky can support it, you know that shit, it's ultralight. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. And it's also the cover for my podcast, so I probably shouldn't shit on it too much, but <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. If you can do that with your pinky, I think my pack would probably, or my pack would break my pinky if I did Oof. that. Yeah. Um, okay. This one um, personally hurt my feelings, uh, but handstand photos. Mm. So like before you do that. before Chance entered hiking, Chance would do like a handstand photo at somewhere cool. Um, it usually took a lot of photos because I'm not very good at handstands, but I felt super impressed when I could like get the toes pointed. I know you've got one at Goat Rocks, right? Yes. Yes, I've got one. Um, no, it's it's right past Timberland Lodge. It's at Mount Hood. Uh are you sure you don't have one of Goat Rocks? There's a, there, like, there could be. Okay. I, th I think <laughs> the one I'm thinking of. You're doing it the entire of, way down the trail. Well, so I did one on the AT because I did the AT after the PCT, and there was a person, I can't remember her name, the one that did the, all the handstands. She had the dreadlocks. Liz Kidder. Yeah. Yes. So I had posted a handstand photo somewhere on the AT. It was just like, this is fun. I'm going to do a handstand here. And I got like some sort of comments that were like, oh, great. We've got another Liz Kidder on <laughs> the trail. Like... Looks like she's copying her for some class. And I was like, I came into reception. I was like, what's happening? I didn't do a handstand on the AT after that. I was so like oh self-conscious about it that people were going to be shitting on me and thinking that I was like riding off this girl's thing yeah. that I was like, I guess I'm not doing handstands ever again. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I you, didn't. You could one-up it and do like a cartwheel and then just take the photo one way in so it looks like a one-handed. No, I just took it really <laughs> no, personally I just, I just and stopped down. doing them. Yeah. Okay. Um, but handstand photos. Okay. And then my second one is another male one, um, just because it happens. I, I think I see it more frequently from men, is the topless before and after the hike photo, where the guy takes a photo being like kind of soft and marshmallowy before the hike starts and then posts it side by side to the malnourished see all the ribs photo. Yeah. Shit, that was on my list. From the bottom of the barrel here. And they do well. Yeah. It's kind of fascinating honestly. yeah no <laughs> i uh, wish i had done one in recent years we got kickback on that because it what it is um offensive in diet culture like it's glorifying being thin no it's not it's just showing how much that's my thing don't get me started yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, get started no no <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we we used to do uh transformations before and after through hike posts and we should bring it back because the yeah bring the, it back yeah the kickback on it was small and I don't necessarily agree with the criticism but yeah, we yeah I was to... drunk when I wrote that stuff I'm sorry but <laughs> no um, no they're they're interesting it's not like you're posting it and being like this is the ideal body right like someone who just summoned Mount Katahdin and looks like they haven't eaten for two weeks like yeah. obviously like it's a normal thing after you've yeah. been walking for a half year to be skinny and like in a physique that you probably will never be able to obtain yeah. again yeah. And it usually doesn't look very good, to be honest. So, <laughs> certainly not for the guys. Yeah, not for the guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you. yeah. So this social media through hiker stereotype is announcing on Instagram that you're going to be writing for the trek before you through hike. <laughs> love that. I love that too. <laughs> do you? Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> that was the trail that one was going to go. Yeah, that's good. 
Yeah. We're all, currently all accepting blogger applications. Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. Okay. I have one more. Okay. I feel confident with this last one. Uh, I don't know if this is necessarily a stereotype or something that somebody is intentionally doing, but this is something that's seen a huge uptick in the last two years, especially is just any photo with you in your Jolly or town shirt. Oh, shirt. that's a good one. Th- those dude. are dominating on those things right are now. hot yeah. right now. And shout out to those guys though. They're cool shirts. Like I'm not shitting on them whatsoever, but like, especially going to trail days last year, Everywhere. It's, it seemed like 60% of people were in one of the two and they're doing a good job making new styles yeah. every year. So it's not just like the one style but yeah that is so true that's a a good one i would also lump that in with the hawaiian shirt sure i feel like that's fallen a little bit because of these shirts yeah but yeah i would say the decline of the hawaiian shirt lined up with a casa de luna not existing because that was always a fun thing to take a photo of it in but b now you can get one that's not cotton yeah right yeah we've actually looked into doing that (laughs) apparel's a whole beast uh, is that it? Do we do three per person? Yes, I've yep. got honorable. Um, honorable I've got honorable mentions. Okay. Um, costumes on Katahdin. Yeah, that's a good costume one. when you're taking your Katahdin sign. Yep. Um, Did you do a costume? No, I. Uh, my entire personality is the costume. Um, <laughs> photos with the hundred mile stones variations as oh, you're going through the PCT, putting the stones into a hundred, two hundred, whatever. AT2. Um, do they do th- well? I guess I did do that on the AT. I just thought it was more PCT esque. Um, I think you notice it more on your first hike. Yeah, maybe You're that's it. You're moving too fast on number two. <laughs> um, we have another one that I'm ripping off from a guest in the studio, which is the high five photo. Yep. Where you are at before the south. Before and after. Yep. Yeah. High fiving the top. Um, you mentioned beforehand shoeies, the shoeies. which I hate. Um, <laughs> I think I think it's great. That's an Australian thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But it's bled over. I don't know if it's Australian it's, through hikers that are the ones that are doing this or if it's just general people. No, it's it, like just an Australian thing because at summer camp, people who would come from Australia were like, oh, you ever do a shoey? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think that we have taken it and made it disgusting. Like yeah. it was already pretty gross. We've taken it and been like, how could we make drinking from a shoe worse? This burst out on the scene for me. There's one Australian UFC fighter after every time he wins, like before his interview with Joe Rogan, like he'll <laughs> dump a beer into a shoe and do it in front of thousands of people. I've Pretty badass. Yeah. I would yeah. do it for the photo or video, but I would line the shoe with a Ziploc bag that can't be seen from the camera angle. You just spill it even more. It would make it so much worse. You just got to go for it. I wouldn't. I think the alcohol kills all the bad stuff no. that's happening that's point. in the shoe. Floaters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I have a couple honorable mentions as well. The tasteful nude. Definitely an uptick oh. in that. Oh, in hiking naked day. Yeah. The photo of me wearing the bandana and nothing else. Top performing photo. Yeah. I've seen a lot more hiking butt cracks over the last few years than what used to be common. <laughs> that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, the TikTok themes were like you're acting out. Michael Scott, usually, like one of those types of things. I feel like that's made an explosion into Instagram as well. I think that's all I've got here. I've won. Yeah, I don't know how much you see this, but you see it sometimes. People in a laundromat wearing something other than normal clothes I'm while sure. they're washing their actual, like a like a rain jacket around their waist yeah. or something like that. Obnoxious mm-hmm. town clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, dirt line above your socks when you take your oh. socks off. I've done that. REI actually gave me a $300 gift card to repost one of those once. And I never saw it anywhere, but I bought a Yeti. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> best, best trade I've yeah. ever done. <laughs> good, good use for sure. <clears throat> good. Okay. Uh, that was fun. Thank you, Rachel. Let's go to the five-star review. This one is from Brian Alsop, a.k.a. a Chuck Norris supporter, which we love. And it is my favorite podcast, five stars. My favorite podcast by far. I've listened to every minute of every episode since the beginning, including all of the bonus Patreon episodes. When I'm on the trail, I'm usually listening to this podcast. When I'm not on the trail, I'm listening to this podcast and getting inspired to get back on the trail. Keep up the great work. 
Thank you guys want to have your review read on this podcast, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave any number of stars, just not one, two, three, or four. <laughs> and you can say anything, as long as you're yeah. not shitting on a guest. Yes, that's where we draw. We found out we have a line, and yeah, that's it. That's it. You can shit on us all you want. I give them permission for my episode. Yeah. If you'd like to, to shit, shit on, on Kyle. No, shit on me. Oh, if you'd so like to yeah, shit yeah. on or Kyle, get, no. <laughs> <laughs> head to our five-star reviews. Yeah. Sticker code. Yes. Um, this one is probably the <laughs> furthest I've pushed us getting banned from social media since. Uh, but I'm. I, this sticker code will be, what kind of porn do you think Zach's watching while we record BPR? Mm, I like Comment that. under the uh, show post Instagram and tell us. And I'll take it a step further. The person that, get, that gets it right, I will follow up and let them know. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> It'd be funny if like the volume was on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of Chuck Norris Award winners, thank you to all of ours, Alex and Misty with Navigators Crafting, Andrew, Austin McDaniel, Austin Ford, Brad and Blair from 13 Adventures, Brent Stenberg, Brian Alsop, Fables, Christopher Marshburn, Coach from Marion Outdoors, Dane, Ish. Derek Cook, Eric Casper, the Friendly er- Ghost, Eric Hoffman, Greg Knight, that one throws me off because it's a new guy. We'll say it again just to give him the extra love. Greg Knight, Greg McDaniel, Maybe. Iron Hike Endurance Productions, Liz Sager, Matt Suka, Mike Poizel, Patrick C. and Cialo, Sawyer Products, Spam, Timothy Hahn, Solo. and Tracy Trigger. Thanks. You can follow us on social at Backpacker Radio on Instagram and TikTok at Backpacker Pod on X, Facebook.com slash Backpacker Radio. You can follow Chaunce. You can find me on Instagram at Juliana underscore Chauncey, and you can get my book, Hiking from Home, a long distance hiking guide for family and friends. Bundled with Zach still? Or I think, not yeah, still? we're getting close to the end of it. So, this will be the last episode where this is relevant. So, yes. if you want the book bundle for 35 bucks, both of our books signed, uh, you can get either Appalachian Trials or Pacific Crest Trials plus Chance's excellent book. Uh, is that was, a compliment? Yeah. What was the coupon code? Little Donkey Girl to get an extra mm-hmm. five bucks off on that. And you can follow Kyle at Kyle Hates Hiking. Pretty much everything. And the, the podcast is Trail Tales uh, or on YouTube, Trail Tales Pod. Just type in Trail Tales and you'll see the orange McAfee knob pinky pack <laughs> photo. <laughs> Subscribe and follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you consume podcasts. Follow us on YouTube. We're going to get a full shakedown from Kyle about <laughs> how we can up our game and get more than 12 people to watch us. But we now have this excellent Pacific Northwest, we think, background. Uh, so hopefully a little bit easier on the eyes here. That is it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening and happy hiking. Bye.